But I think the development of full artificial intelligence will spell the end of the human race. It's a flying object, and we don't know what it is. I would hope somebody is checking it out. I'm glad the Pentagon is looking at this, because if it poses a threat, I want them on top. Well, the craft generates its own gravitational field. So you said there's lights in the sky? The internet has become the command center for criminals and terrorists. That's, that's what we're instructed to say. Roswell, Area 51, alien kept deep under the ground. Guys, it's Thursday night, which is one of the nights we get together to talk about all the things we're not allowed to talk about. You know what they are? Aliens, conspiracy, the paranormal, the government, academia, the 24-hour news cycle, propaganda, and the general feeling that we live in the upside down. This show is live. We are streaming on Facebook, DLive, and YouTube. We are broadcasting live on the Fringe FM. And as always, ever since the very beginning of this show, we are taking your phone calls. If you want to be part of the show at any point tonight, you can give us a call at 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. That, of course, is a Las Vegas area code. That is where we're streaming from. That's where we're broadcasting from. And if you don't like the, the uh, long distance there, the 702 Las Vegas area code, and you're international, we have people listening all over the world. I'm talking to you guys out there. I see you in the chat. I see the folks from the United Kingdom. I see the folks from Singapore. I see the folks from Australia and New Zealand. I see you out there. We are broadcasting all over the world. And if you don't like that 702, then you can join us on the Discord, which is free. It's a chat client. It's a voice client. You can uh, go to troubledminds.org. That's the official website. And click on the Discord. Discord link, and you can be on the show that way as well. Completely free, as long as you have an internet connection. And the voice quality, I have to say, is quite a bit better than a telephone, as uh, we've tested. We have a telephone line, and it just seems to be crap most times. No offense uh, to old school you know, telephone technology, but uh, things have changed. The world is changing. Can you smell it? Very much kind of like the Lord in the Rings, right? Uh, Lord, sorry, <laughs> I messed that up. Lord of the Rings. You remember that? When it kind of starts and you've got uh, the Lady Galadriel whispering in, in, in the mists of the forest that the, the world is changing. 
Yeah, well, it is, isn't it? <laughs> it absolutely is. And so uh, as part of that, technology can be a good thing as well as a bad thing, which we always talk about. But that's not the topic tonight. The topic tonight, like I said, my detractors would say, oh, what are you doing tonight, Mike? You telling ghost stories on the internet? Well, yeah, <laughs> that's what we're doing tonight. We got some ghost stories tonight to tell. And uh, interestingly, uh, Many times, uh, if you go back and you know, kind of look at historically, uh, a lot of the ghost stories, a lot of the mythologies, a lot of the folklore surrounding ghosts, um, you know, uh, is kind of reserved for um, you know the time around Halloween, right? When they say that the the veil is at its most thin, its thinnest, right? That's what they say. That's uh, you know, as the the harvest season sort of uh, winds down and uh, kind of the the. The, uh, the, the season of death arrives, meaning, uh, you know, famine and pestilence and uh, people freezing, you know, uh, historically, not, uh, not you know, uh, things have changed quite a bit in, in the last, you know, several thousand years. But you get my meaning. It's uh, Halloween typically is the time for ghost stories. And there's a number of reasons for that. They say that uh, there's, uh, you know, the, the pagan holiday, the Halloween, All Hallows' Eve, and that uh, on particular times of the year that the, the veil becomes thin. And as a result of that, uh, the ghosts seem to become more um, more visible, more prevalent. They seem to be able to step into our realm more uh, more often, let's say. I think that's probably a good way to put it. Um, I don't know. Like, I'm not an expert in these things, okay? So as, as many of you know, I'm not the answers guy. I'm more of the questions guy. And so that's why we do this. We talk about these things so I can learn some of this stuff. Uh, and not only that, learn it uh, for myself, of course, like, like I... Education is important to me. It's uh, it's important to get smarter every day, to learn something new every day, to push yourself, uh, push push yourself every day, and uh, you know just get better, just get smarter, just get uh, you know more adaptable, all those things. And so, uh, kind of as a result of that, I you know I, I find myself looking into strange things, and uh, I think that's okay. It's because. Uh, for a number of reasons, right? You, you guys are clearly listening to this show and to this network and uh, this type of radio, paranormal type radio, because there, you know, there are important stories out there that come from history that, you know, may be, um, may be, may be critical to, to maybe, uh, I don't know, a better future, a different future, if we understand these things. Or, uh, you know, I know a lot, of it, a lot of it gets written off as hooey or, you know, woo-woo or, you know, ha-ha, ghost stories, this type of thing. But I don't know. I'm not so sure. I think there's a, a, a number of different ways to look at this. And uh, so that's the topic tonight, uh, as I ramble on quite a, quite a bit here. But uh, so that's one reason why I do this. And the second is we've always done it live to include you, like I stated, because I've learned a tremendous amount from the people that contribute to the show in the chat, the people that call in, the people that are part of this entire thing since we started, the whole Troubled Minds community, uh, the people on Fringe FM, lots and lots of smart folks. Also, please join the Discord at Fringe, fringe.fm slash chat. Go say hi. Lots of smart folks over there chatting it up on a daily basis as well. And um, like I said, uh, the community is the important thing here is uh, we get together, we talk about this stuff and learn from each other. So hopefully I'm not the guy educating anybody. I'm just kind of uh, starting a conversation to maybe uh, bring out the things that you guys know about so that uh, we can share them together and have a good conversation here. So so that's the topic tonight. Again, uh, streaming live on Facebook, D Live and YouTube, broadcasting live on the Fringe FM. And uh, we're uh, talking ghosts tonight. And so oddly enough, uh, there's a couple things. So like I, like I stated when we started there, uh, the ghost stories seem to be more prevalent during Halloween, kind of around that time, right? But there are also um, some stories out there that seem to be, um, instead of when the veil is thin, maybe to kind of center around uh, like the summer solstice, for instance, which is coming up, by the way, the longest day of the year. And so, we, you know, we have these different things. We have the winter solstice, which is like a, a pagan holiday, the summer solstice as well. And so um, if the particular times a year, uh, the veil is most thin and we can, you know, perceive these ghosts or they're able to maybe step through and show themselves or whatever's happening with that particular thing. What about this summer business? Because uh, there's this story. Let's go here. And uh, I saw this actually, and this is what kind of tipped me off to this entire thing, which I thought was fantastic. Um, is uh, This is from uh, LANCS.live. And I'm going to link this as always, and you guys can follow along if you prefer. But uh, so the story goes a little something like this. Actually, I'll read it from the article so I don't butcher it. Uh, but uh, it's very much in line with what I'm saying here is that uh, during a particular time, 
time of year, uh, in particular, Midsummer's Day, which is what they call it in the United Kingdom, which is also the summer solstice, uh, these, uh, these things, these spirits, these ghosts become, uh, they, they do like a uh, procession. And we've done like a, a show on ghostly processions in the past. We talked about the night marchers in Hawaii. We talked about the ghosts of Gettysburg and some of these battlefield things. And we can revisit some of that tonight as well as a, as, as a way to discuss this. So the first, the first question I have for tonight is, um, so clearly we have different times of year that seem to be more or less important regarding, um, what would you say, uh, ghost, ghostly phenomena, I guess, is probably the best way to put this. And so let's go with this one. So this is, uh, again, lanks.live, L-A-N-C-S dot live. Headline is this. The Lake District fell haunted by phantom ghost army that appears in June. Troops on foot and horseback have been seen marching on the fell side at the edge of Blancanthra. Blancathra? Blancathra, according to legend. You'll have to excuse my terrible uh, uh, pronunciation of these amazing old, old words here. But, uh, but th- this, is, this is where this comes from. And so not only, so I'll, I'll read some of this so we know exactly where we're starting here. But uh, so, so as, as we go through this, the questions on my mind are, are several. Um, so one, if Halloween and the, the winter solstice and the, the dark times of the year, right, when the, it's, it's mostly dark outside and gloomy and all the rest of that, uh, is, is when the thin is most veiled, what about the summer solstice? What about Midsummer's Day? Uh, because it seems, in this case, in this exact case, that something is amiss, and uh, these ghosts seem to only appear on that particular day. So here we go. Let's read some of this. I thought this was pretty amazing. And this just popped. This is a brand new article because, of course, they're looking forward to uh, the summer solstice, which is coming. I believe it's June 24th, I want to say. What's the day today? Today is uh, 17th here. So uh, June 24th, they say, is Midsummer's Day. Midsummer's day and that's when these apparitions are seen uh, kind of uh, trampling about uh, on top of the, the hill here. So here we go. Um, uh, so, if legend is to be believed, the fell side of the edge of Blancathra is home to the, the, this ghostly procession that has been witnessed on a few occasions at midsummer. The first time they were seen is said to have been during the evening of Midsummer's Day in 1735, where a servant claimed to have watched a line of soldiers, both on foot and horseback, marching their way across the fell. Just two years later, the servant's master and other family members witnessed this, the same strange sighting, which was apparently five men deep. However, many locals refused to believe both tales. But 10 years later, on Midsummer's Day evening in 1745, the spirits would be seen by no less than 26 people who were described as sober and respected. And they even testified on oath as to what they had seen. They claimed to have watched a line of marching troops, cavalry, and even carriages traveling along the summit ridge for hours. All right. So uh, not just one sighting, two sightings, three sightings now. And the third sighting, 10 years later, on Midsummer's Day evening, again, at a particular time of the year, we start to see these apparitions. Marching on top of the fell, they say. All right? And so as it were, uh, here we go. The next day, uh, Southern, Southern Fell was climbed, and not a footprint was found on the soft ground of the ridge. Uh, the only logical explanation that was ever offered was that it was, quote, some bizarre mirage or reflection of Bonnie Prince Charles's army that day exercising on the Scottish coast. And if you know anything about the, uh, I'm not an expert, of course, but if you know anything about uh, the United Kingdom, uh, this particular area of Cumbria is in the northwest. I don't believe it's close enough to Scotland to matter. (laughs) I don't know. Uh, Like I said, uh, I'll I'll rely on the people that live out that way to make that determination. But in any case, so here's the, um, let's see, where is the, so I've got the the actual 
here we go, the link to this, if you want to see the explanation where this came from, where they, where they came up with this particular explanation, it doesn't seem to be any, any uh, debunking situation. It just seems like uh, they, they kind of toss it out there as a possible explanation. Nobody doing any kind of uh, light and parlor tricks and you know lining up some scientific experiments to see if they could reproduce this ghostly army marching atop the fell uh, on midsummer's day midsummer's day eve uh so so i don't know like this this kind of got me thinking right so not only is this not only one, number one is super cool story but um number two the the questions started flowing right and, and that's that's what i love like uh, you read one story and it kind of gets you thinking in some other other terms some other uh, angles some other alleyways here and so back to the questions um and so the questions there, there's we have a lot more of these I, i've pulled out all kinds of stories to talk about tonight so if you guys get bored we can tell ghost stories on the internet because well that's always fun as hell isn't it uh so there's plenty of that but i wanted to start here because for, for a couple reasons. Uh, number one, uh, we have this other guy, too. Let's go to this guy. Um, now, there's a guy that actually went out and uh, tried to hike hike the area and try and find these ghosts. Let's see. Where is this article? Here we go. This guy. This is a, he, he's a mountain climber, and uh, this, this blog is called Because They're There. Because They're There, right? And basically, uh, it's kind of like a tongue-in-cheek way to say why he climbs mountains is because they're there. And so this is his blog, right? This is uh, where he talked about actually going out to this particular area. And he was looking for these, these ghosts, these apparitions that, that have appeared on the hilltop in, in Cumbria, is what, as it's called. And so um, Southern Fell Blecanthra. Oh, okay, that's, uh, again, excuse my poor pronunciation if it's, it's way off there. But uh, so he went out there and he wrote a, a nice blog post. And this was in January. This is January 25th and back in 2011 when he went out to check this out. And uh, so he, you know, he, he kind of uh, has some nice pictures here. On top of Blecanthra, the wind is blowing. Uh, he's got uh, visibility issues. There's tons of fog up there. He's, uh, you know, it's it's a uh, it's it's a, it's a lovely a lovely British day, in uh, in January, right? As you would expect. And so, uh, unfortunately, he he spent a lot of time kind of uh, uh, looking for these apparitions. And uh, th- this is the thing that kind of got me and was like, okay, wait a minute here. What's going on? Is that uh, he uh, basically came up empty-handed. And, uh, you know, entertaining blog, he's talking about, you know, of course, you, you get these nature guys go out, they, they stomp around and do their thing, and he's, he's looking for ghosts at the same time. It's hard to argue with that, right? Sounds like a ton of fun to me. And so at, at the end of this, at the end of his blog here, he comes to the conclusion, well, as darkness falls, I lift my eyes towards the fell, searching for soldiers. Of course, he's searching for these apparitions. There's nothing up there but mist, foul weather, and encroaching night nothing alive and nothing dead no lost armies no roman eagles no scarlet coats heavy with rain no dripping jacobite plaid might have to come back on midsummer day after all like i have said all along and so, so interesting uh, that, uh, you know, he did go stomping around out there in January, came up empty handed. But uh, I kind of wonder, is anybody out there that's listening? I know we have lots of folks that listen in the United Kingdom. Anybody live out near this area where uh, they've maybe heard these stories, maybe firsthand stories of uh, this particular ghost army that was seen marching through the, the fell side at the edge of Black Canthra, I'm sorry, Blen Can- I can't say it, Blen Cathra. Blencathra is how it looks like it, it, it should be said. But okay, so if there's any of you out there, I'd love to hear from you tonight. And that's part of this, the deal here. Like I said, we start the, uh, start the conversation and hope that you guys can fill this in and educate me and uh, teach me some things about this. But it kind of gets me thinking, right? So not only, so that's number one. The first thing is, all right, so then if we have the ghosts that show up at particular times, uh, how about if there's particular places now? So we, we've kind of talked about this uh, in not not so in depth in the past, just kind of in, in theory and postulation with some other things, even UFOs per se. But uh, so think of it this way now. So if we have particular times of the year 
and particular places, it's, it seems to be that maybe both of those things have to come together, right, for uh, these instances, instances to occur. Now, and what I mean by that is uh, think of uh, if anybody's watching the, the show recently, um, Skinwalker Ranch, the, uh, as they're you know, doing some of that uh, the research there. And uh, there, there seems to be some bizarre phenomena that happens a lot. And it's, it's everything from uh, apparitions to uh, the poltergeist type stuff to, you know, the skinwalkers, the hauntings, the this, the that, everything, right? It seems to be everything. They're picking up magnetic anomalies. They're getting radiation spikes that are completely inexplicable. And so it doesn't seem to be just the place, right? The place has got to be important, right? I think that's what we're talking about. Sometimes you get the rivers cross, right? We'll, we'll, we'll talk about some of this and some, some of the places that may be more, more um, let's see, uh, what, how would you say, more, uh, more susceptible to, to maybe a, a thin veil at particular times. So, so that's what kind of got me thinking, right? So it was not just, back, so back to Skinwalker, just to explain real fast. So they, they find these things, these, these man- magnetic anomalies, radiation spikes, see strange lights in the sky, all this stuff, poltergeist hauntings, uh, you know, like things moving around on their own, things like this, right? And there's stories going back dozens or hundreds of years, depending on who you ask, thousands maybe, about Skinwalker Ranch, okay? But, so that's the place. However, it doesn't seem to be repeatable, or it doesn't seem to be that uh, it happens like clockwork. It almost ha- seems like it happens on its own schedule, on its own time. Uh, and that's kind of what I'm looking at here. So not only uh, are we thinking about a particular place where maybe these sorts of uh, apparitions maybe kind of come around and, uh, and you know, uh, show themselves. Again, like the night marchers of Hawaii or like this particular instance of the, uh, the, the fell there in uh, Blen- Blen- Can- Blencathra. There you go, I said it. Uh, like, but then, so not only the, the place, but then the time. So in this particular one in the United Kingdom, uh, they seem to come around at Midsummer's Day. So you tell me, I don't know. That, like that, this, this stuff to me is uh, fascinating because if, it, if these, this phenomena is kind of on its own schedule, doing its own thing, but it's kind of maybe stapled down to particular places, um, what does it mean? I think uh, I think there's some pretty big, uh, pretty pretty fascinating questions there, if you ask me, and uh, that's what we're talking about tonight. So, so I'm not exactly sure where, uh, what kind of stuff you guys know about this, or again, like I said, if anybody out there that listens in the United Kingdom is is aware of this, or maybe has seen this, or you know, maybe some family stories, that would be amazing. I realize the United Kingdom is a little bit of a bigger place. It's not, you know, not everybody's going to be li- living next to this or have been there, but but it is a, a pretty pretty curious to me that. We have uh, a particular place and a particular time, Midsummer's Day, back to that again. And it seems to be that this, this is when these, this particular anyway, ghostly procession seems to occur. And so uh, I would imagine, right, uh, kind of like they do on uh, Stonehenge and things like this, right, some of these Neolithic um, Stone Age type places, uh, you know, they, they go for the summer solstice, right? You get a ton of people there, which I think has been canceled this year, right? I think they canceled the Stonehenge thing again this year. But anyway, so the, you know, the, the sun comes through just perfectly, and there's supposed to be some sort of um, enlightening, uh, some, some kind of effect going on with the, the place and the, uh, you know, the, the sunlight and everything, right? Uh, there you go. Uh, England, not UK, Mike. This is England. All right, there we go. England, see? You've got to correct me. got to correct me. Because if I say United Kingdom, well, the people in England get mad at me. But in any case... Uh, so we're, we're talking about England tonight, uh, but everywhere else as well. So the question becomes, not only are there particular areas where ghost processions or ghostly occurrences happen, right? Uh, but also, is it based on the time of year, right? And so what kind of schedule, what kind of, let's say, supernatural schedule could they be holding? Could they be carrying that, uh, that maybe we can maybe lean on and get some insight to. So that's, that's the question tonight. That's kind of what's on my mind. We have some other ghost stories to talk about because this isn't just the only one. There are many more. But those are the, those are the, the, the dynamics that are kind of playing through this as I, as I started asking myself some questions. And maybe you guys know. So uh, hopefully uh, we're there and you guys are uh, already locked into this and understand what's going on because, well, I sure as hell don't. But as you know, I'm not the answer guy. I'm the questions guy. So if you want to be a part of the show tonight, we're talking about the summer solstice, Midsummer's Day. We're talking about how possibly the veil may change based on time and place 
and ghostly processions or ghostly apparitions seem to come through. What do you guys know about this? Is this interesting to you? I hope so. If you have something to teach me or teach everybody else here, give us a call. We're streaming live. We're live on the Fringe FM, and we're talking ghost stories on the Internet. 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. This is Troubled Minds. I'm Michael Strange. Don't go anywhere. More conversation about ghosts after the break. Welcome back to Troubled Minds. I'm your host, Michael Strange. We are streaming on Facebook, YouTube, and DLive. And we are broadcasting live on the Fringe FM. Tonight, we're telling ghost stories on the internet. And what that means is... When the veil becomes thin, does it matter? The time and the place? And how does that relate to particular ghostly phenomena that seem to repeat? Including, let's say, at Gettysburg. Places like this, right? Uh, in particular. There's a, there's a lot of these battlefield-type places as well that we'll get to a little bit tonight, a little bit later tonight. But uh, so, so as we start and begin this conversation, that's really what comes to my mind, is that uh, what, what is going on with this and how come uh, this is, you know, not so, you know, you know if it was a scientifically uh, on a schedule, let's say. Like, let's say the ghostly apparitions were like, oh, they're going to show up at uh, Midsummer's Eve at, uh, you know, about 8.30 p.m. just after the sundown type of thing, right? Then you could, you know, you could bring some cameras up there. You could bring some people up there. And you could get some actual footage of this, right? You could get the ghost hunters with their little EVP things and all the all the things, right? I don't know. Like, I'm not so sure about all this. I don't know what's going on. But uh, but the, the thing is, what I don't know the answers. That's that's Those are the questions. That's how we begin this. And th- this starts in this particular place. It kind of got me thinking with this article and uh, the in the Lake District, right? So the, the fell, uh, up in the fell, they haunted by phantom ghost army that appears in June. And so it seems to, uh, is this, so is it because it's like a legend? Uh, and it, you know, like, so again, back, back to those questions. First, we can go to the most basic of these questions is are, are ghosts real? Right. I think I think uh, it, you're going to get a different answer, basically, depending on who you ask. Right. And so I think that's that's number one. All right. Uh, are ghosts real to you? And if they are, what are they? Uh, some people suggest that they are, you know, the damned or uh, human spirits that are trapped uh, in on Earth and, and are looking to to pass on, to move on into to the other realm. And they're stuck for some reason. Right. And other people suggest that ghosts in particular are. Uh, more specifically, something like, um, uh, let's say, like energy, like uh, good or bad energy that is trapped in place, kind of repeating an action, uh, sort of like you would expect to see in a movie, right? In a scene from a movie, like a particular murder or a particular battlefield, like we're discussing here, or a particular place, like maybe this place in England, where uh, maybe these things happen because there was a particular um traumatic event okay so so again i don't know like those these questions are big questions i understand and that's what we do i mean you know the little questions are like well uh, you know is nancy pelosi a crook yeah the answer is yeah yes absolutely that's a little question and everybody knows the answer to that so you know uh, bigger questions to me are uh, one uh, probably uh, more entertaining for sure and more fun to talk about but how about uh, you know kind of more mind bending more mind stretching more more able to make us uh, look at the world in a different way and i think that's very important so that's what we're doing tonight so uh, the long winding intro brings us to this i'm i'm going you know I, i've got the microphone here i talk all kinds of hours per week on a weekly basis on on the internet on the radio so most most of the time you guys know what i think right uh, i'm not the answers guy but i'll tell you well I, uh, based on what i've seen maybe this right uh, kind of like that 
But that's not what this is about. This is about you. So we're, we're actually asking these questions tonight to hear from you. So how about this? Is there anybody out there that's uh, seen this sort of thing happen around them, maybe in the area they live? Like I know the, the Night Stalker there, Derek in Massachusetts, has said there are particular areas where he lives up there, Gettysburg. Uh, he said there's a Stonehenge up on the East Coast there but up by where he's at as well, like, a, like an American Stonehenge and things like this I've heard where maybe these apparitions kind of come through, right? And so is it a particular place? And if it is very much like, let's say, Skinwalker Ranch, is it also a particular time? And so uh, if it was, uh, like I said, if it was like clockwork, like paranormal spiritual clockwork, it'd be easy, right? Everybody shows up at 9 o'clock on Tuesday at a particular spot, and bam, the ghosts are there. But I'm not so sure it's that easy. So, so what kind of goes into this? Like, what am I missing? Clearly the time of year, clearly the place, clearly what's, what's beyond that? What's beyond that? I don't know beyond that, but um, that's, uh, that's the question tonight. So if you want to be part of the show, I'd love to hear from you. If you've got a, a hot spot near you, if you want to talk about Skinwalker Ranch a little bit, uh, I know that show's been on. We can kind of blend that into this because I think it's, it's pretty relevant to the discussion in that they, fa- they find these anomalies, they're doing all these scientific experiments, and they can't really figure out what's going on because they can't really time it correctly. It'll just randomly happen, right? And then they're like, whoa, whoa, we're getting radiation spikes here and there and everywhere. And then, you know, then it's gone. And then they go back there later and with the radiation gear and all this other stuff and it, nothing. There's literally nothing, just background radiation. So, so again, right? So the place seems to be a hot spot, but what about the times? And maybe, uh, maybe there's a, you know, you think there's an interdimensional timekeeper somewhere? <laughs> this controlling the veil, the galactic wizard of Oz, as it were, the dimensional wizard of Oz. I don't know. I, I'm making fun of myself here, but, but I don't know. Like th- those are the questions that I'm not really sure about. And so uh, if you guys have any ideas about this, I'd love to hear from you. 702-957-1037. You can join the discord at troubledminds.org. Also at fringe.fm slash chat. A couple di- different discords. We're watching them both and reading, uh, reading from the chat. So if you guys know anything about this, please call. I love to hear from you, and uh, that's that's where the discussion begins. As you know, like uh, we we have a lot of things we can talk about. There's this isn't the only one. This place in uh, in England where they seem to see these apparitions, this this apparition of an army up on the ledge, up on the fell at uh, Midsummer's Day. So that's just one example. Another's Skinwalker Ranch, right? Where th- these things happen, they seem to be paranormal in nature, and the timing seems to also be suspect meaning that it's just uh it seems to not be on a schedule it seems to you know it, like in this one in particular they say midsummer's day all right uh, other times they say halloween they say the winter solstice they say as matt in, from california there in the chat said maybe may 1st because it's had the halfway point between the beginning of the year and halloween or was it a, the, win- the winter solstice and halloween i'm not sure in any case some seem to be on a schedule and others do not so what the heck's going on here These are the questions I'm asking, and I hope you guys have some answers, or at least some ideas. I'm not going to pin you to to some perfect answers here, because I think uh, when we're talking in the abstract about spirits and things, I I don't think it's easy to uh, to get final answers here. But uh, let's go to, uh, thank you for the phone call. Uh, We're looking to talk to you guys tonight. 702-957-1037, 702-957-1037, troubledminds.org. Phone number's on top. Discord link is on top. Let's go to Angela. Angela uh, from Facebook, I believe. You're on Trouble Minds with Mike. How are you, my friend? Hi, good. I'm good. Right on. What do you think about this topic tonight? Am I all over the place or am I onto something? What do you think? It, well, I think there is a lot of something to be said about certain locations that repeat something that played out there that the energy in a way is recorded. Um, I actually just was thinking of something else to tell you, but um, I was the Northwest driving with my mom, we pulled over to this one place. It was like a dirt pullout and there was a, a wooden fence and you, there was a, you could walk through and it was sort of like this sloping down mountainside or just big, huge hilly meadow. And off in the distance were some woods and there was this big boulder just kind of sitting out there and there weren't any other boulders. It was kind of out of place, but I walked up to it and I put my hand on it. And when I did, everything changed about maybe 20, 30 feet ahead of me, there was, um, sort of this tree barricade that was built and there was two men behind it. One of them was sitting against it backwards facing me. And there was a battle going on off in this, this meadow down below. 
And the Northwest, I, the only thing I could think of was like, you know, the American Indian Wars and things like that. So it wouldn't have been Civil War or anything. is something different. But he saw me. He reacted. And I kind of jumped and I pulled my hand off the rock and everything disappeared. And I put my hand back on the rock and it didn't come back. But I had that moment of that flash of seeing all of that playing out. But the guy that was sitting in the barricade facing me reacted to my being there. It was so weird. That's creepy. Uh, so so uh, did, did you see enough? I, I know these things happen like snap of the finger sometimes. Did you see enough to maybe pick out like a time frame maybe? Like maybe clothing from the people or anything like that? Maybe technology, muskets or, or who knows, uh, axes, anything like this? Uh, yeah, it was definitely, um, you know, like muskets and things. I mean, I can't even say there was a uniform. It's like they were just wearing you know, almost rags or sackcloth or just something very rough, roughly um, woven, you know, with maybe a belt, you know what I mean, that type of thing. So just really early on. Okay, so we're talking something from um, at least 150 years ago plus. Uh, so, so interestingly, oh, yeah. and then you, so do you think you actually possibly triggered it by maybe touching that rock or do you think that was a coincidence? It, yeah, I have all kinds of weird things that happen energetically and, and sightings and you name it, I've done it. But that was one that was just really fantastic because it was a whole outdoor panoramic experience. Whereas, you know, if I go into an antique store and I pick up items, I'll get flashes of things. But this was huge. It was just really big. Yeah, yeah. So that was totally different. Yeah, that's, that's environmental. It wasn't just an object. Right, exactly. Okay, so so then what about what I'm what I'm talking about here is that so clearly the spot was probably there. Like this this happened in that spot. So do you think that um the maybe the time of year, the time of day or something like that had something to do with when you see these things? Uh can you comment on that on, on what you what you think about that? I really don't know because I don't remember. I just remember it being nice weather, so maybe it was spring or summer because Northwest, you know, if it's nice weather, it's usually late summer. But I, I don't know. Um, I haven't researched it enough. It happened, I was probably, gosh, seven or eight years old, so it was a long time ago. Um, it's just one of those things that, that always stuck. And I, I've had lots of other experiences, but nothing as, like I said, environmentally huge as that. That was that was like the biggest, you know, view of something I've ever had, space wise. It yeah, that's a, up the whole valley meadow. That's amazing, and so that's not the the only time I've heard that. Actually, I'm sure you've heard of that the Battle of Gettysburg and horrific and the loss of life and all that. It seems to be a hot spot as well, Absolutely. where where yeah. people see, um, you know, uh, Union soldiers, Confederate soldiers, uh, and maybe in these, um, like I was describing earlier, in in these kind of locked in these energy patterns, maybe where they're marching or they're they're trying to take a hill and they're kind of living out this same scene over over and over again. And uh, there's there's actually some pretty compelling footage on YouTube uh, about uh, some of this Gettysburg, st- Gettysburg stuff. I've seen some uh, some pictures of these things, and like I'm like, what? Like th- that doesn't even look fake at all. That looks like legitimate apparitions going on. It's 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 pretty spooky. That's pretty compelling. When I heard stories like that, it reminded me of what I saw when I was little. But it was sort of out of place because it's not the South. You know, what I'm saying it's the Northwest. So what happened up there? That there was a war, and it, the only thing I can think of is. You know, like American Indian Wars. So, I mean, that's the only thing I can think of. Yeah, there was a lot of that. That's for sure. <laughs> Unfortunately. But, yeah, interesting. So, okay, so, and so that's the only time anything at that scale has happened. Has anything else happened that maybe uh, would, would maybe give us some insight into maybe time of year? Have you ever uh, had anything happen maybe closer to the winter solstice or the summer solstice or anything like this? Well, tell, when, do we know when, when is winter solstice? Because I, I was... That's like a, that? it's going to be right around like December 17th is some, somewhere right in there, like a couple yeah, week, no. week before Christmas. The other thing that I had happen with the pyramid, I was, it was like February and okay. that, that's what triggered me to want to call was that about a place because I was in Guatemala. We went to this pyramid. It had not been excavated. So we had to climb up um, rope ladders through the jungle to get onto the pyramid. And once we were up there, and there was probably 40 or 50 of us because it was a whole bus tour of people. I had walked around the back of the temple on top of the pyramid. There's like a little room up there. I walked around the back of it, and I sat on this bump-out stone that was supporting the back wall. And when I did, I had this total experience. I mean, it was incredible. Um, without going into too much detail, I sat there for quite a while, seeing all the things that I saw and heard and felt, and it was not a normal 
vision of our reality now. It was the same place, but I saw everything changed. And after a while, as I was enjoying all of that, I decided, you know, I had been there a long time and I had not seen anybody else from the tour come around the corner of, you know, the temple. So I thought, well, maybe I better go back. You know, they're probably getting ready to leave. So when I did, I went around the temple and there was nobody there. Everybody was gone. And I, I, my heart just, you know, leapt out of my chest because I thought, my God, they've left me. And, and just as I was panicking, the, one of the tour guides came around the other side of the temple. When he saw me, he, I mean, he just went white. They literally thought I fell off and were about to send rescue to find my body down the, you know, the side somewhere. But he had just walked around the entire temple and did not see me. And I came out the opposite way. So we had to have passed cross. I, you know, crossed paths. He never saw me. I did not see him until we walked around the front. And apparently almost everybody on the tour had walked around the entire temple. Nobody saw me the entire time. I was completely invisible to them. So again, just, you know, that's what made me think of it was a place that would have something unique about it that where something like that would happen. But it was sort of the opposite. Something else didn't appear. I disappeared. But yeah, that was just, I mean, it's one sort of, of like time. you maybe phased through a portal into another time for a minute. That's, that's amazing. That's, that's, yeah. that's, a, that's an incredible story. And so that you said that was Guatemala, right? It was, yeah, Guatemala. Wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's like I just, I just, I went through a dimension. I was in the same physical spot, but I, I went to another dimension and, and I guess my body went too because I, they couldn't see me and I couldn't see them. That's incredible. But as far as what I was seeing, I was see, right there. I was seeing the temple and the pyramid and the, and the jungle and, you know, nothing physically had changed around me, but I had physically vanished. Wow. That and so, bizarre. so interesting. So, so definitely, so you're, you're definitely in, in the camp of uh, these, there's particular spots that seem to be hot spots where these things happen. And I, I'm with you on that. I, I don't think anybody will doubt that. There's there's probably so many the world over that you can point to. And again, you know, like I brought up Skinwalker Ranch a couple of times, uh, that that place included. It's it's just uh it's difficult to uh, to maybe pin it down to win. I think maybe it's a question, right? Like kind of like I said, uh, maybe the solstice is here, maybe not. Maybe not entirely. Maybe it's a kind of a random thing or maybe in your case you kind of bring the energy that maybe brings it out in the area. That could be as well, huh? That's what I think is it's just with the so many different experiences that I've had. I, I just am wired a certain way to to be able to perceive those other dimensions and shifts and things when they happen. They're probably happening all around us all the time, but most people don't perceive it for whatever reason I do. Or they can tell that I do, so they interact intentionally because they know I can see. I don't know. But um, my house is very active, and I don't think it's the house. Again, I think it's me. But um, just to give you an example, um, all the family has seen this little girl running around the house. And in 2016, the house burned down and we rebuilt it. When we did, we added a second story. So now the hall has been moved and there's a staircase here that was never here before. And she's using the stairs. So she's in the here and now space. She's using the new, the new footprint of the house. She's not walking through walls where they used to be. Right. So, so that, the, you know what I'm so yeah, whoever yeah, yeah. or whatever she is, she's using the now space. So it's not uh, so. So they are phasing through and kind of uh, interacting here. It's not like they're stuck in that uh, the time slice of wherever they're from. Uh, they're 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 coming through somehow and interacting with us. And that that part's very real, right. according to your story. There, wow, yeah, give me chills. Yeah, that, that fantastic stories. Uh, anything else while we got you on? Uh, I could uh, I could pick your brain all night about this stuff. And so there 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 are other and people I can like talk you. all night about it. So. <laughs> okay, <laughs> awesome, awesome. Uh, so it's not the first time I've heard this. I've heard people uh, describe that they're very sensitive to objects and places, and uh, tend to see things that other people don't see. Right? Uh, very. Uh, you can call it like a maybe a medium or uh, you know a sensitive or empath. What there's so many words they use to, to describe people like you, but uh, and, and I mean that in a good way. Uh, but but I, I, like I don't know. Like I'm completely blind to that. It's never happened to me. And so it's uh, so not only is it uh, one concerning because I'm like oh crap what if it happens one day am I gonna like like my hair is going to turn more white. <laughs> I'm like, is it going to scare the hell out of me? I, I don't know. Like, uh, it's, it's fascinating as heck to me, but what do you think? Do you think it's a natural innate thing or do you think it's something that um, you kind of learned as you, uh, as you grew up? 
You know, I think it can phase in or out at any time in life, depending on what you've learned or have come to realize. I think a lot of people are born with this ability, and over time it gets shut down. And in my case, it didn't get shut down. So it just stayed available, and things continued to happen, so I continued to absorb and learn, and it just expanded. I see. I see. So uh, do you have the ability to shut it off? Can you just, like, say, no, I don't want this right now, and it, and it stops? I think and in some cases, yes, because, like, when my kids were little, I really wanted to stay grounded, and I didn't want to go anywhere because, you know, like I said, I've had other experiences that take me away, and I didn't want to be away at night, especially when I was asleep, because I wanted to be able to, to monitor, you know, the sounds and things in the house. I think for like the 10 years when my kids were little, not a lot happened unless it was an emergency. I see. Okay. So, so it was, so it seems to be a receptive thing. You need, you kind of need to be open to it for it to go down. Interesting. Interesting. So, so you, you were the antenna, you were the hotspot. You bring it with you. I think I am. I think I'm the conduit for some, whatever reason it's, it's me, wherever I go, I'm able to read what's there. That's fantastic. That's, that is fantastic. Uh, so, so we got a, a couple minutes left before we go to a break here. So anything else while we got you on the phone tonight? Uh, and thank you. Number one, thank you so much for calling because uh, stories like this are exactly why we do this show, to hear firsthand accounts of people that say, yeah, yeah, I, I know about that. And here you are uh, teaching a lot of people about uh, these things that, that maybe don't or will never see this. I may never see any of this, even a, even a portion of this. So it's, it's great for me. But uh, anything else while we got you on tonight? Yeah, I, you know, the things really spiked um, when I opened back up after now that my kids are a little older, um, and I'm really questioning where the line is drawn between spirit, paranormal, and ET, because I'm really starting to think a lot of what's going on in my house is ET, you know, that not, not a spirit or a ghost. I think they're popping in and visiting and doing things, you know. Um, just as, just like anybody else would. And, and I've seen them all my life, and I mean, I've had lots of experiences, but my first thought is something goes bump in the house that it's spirit, but now I'm not so sure. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I wish I could have had some insight for you. <laughs> all, all I have is questions. <laughs> I appreciate the call, Angela. And you're, you're calling from, is Kentucky so right? Much. Is Kentucky right? I'm in Indiana. Indiana. That's what I meant. Angela from Indiana. I appreciate the call. Thank you for sharing with us tonight, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Have a fantastic night. Thanks so much. Thank you. There you go. There you go. A great call there. And th this is the type of stuff that, again, this is why we do this show live, exactly for calls like that. Uh, now, now, is anybody out there sensitive to this in some way, shape, or form? Uh, do you like back to the the questions of the of tonight? Is it a particular place? Is it like a particular portal or vortex that's happening in a particular area, or is it like a an actual like human beacon or uh, like some maybe the the person is the antenna that's making the the connection? To, the, to that other side. Uh, so I, I don't know. Again, like I said, I, I, I have never experienced any of these things, so I am literally uh, fumbling in the dark here. But if you guys have, uh, it, uh, it will enlighten not just me, but probably a lot of people listening. So uh, as always, I appreciate the phone calls. So that's number one. Get that out of the way tonight. Thank you so much, Angela. Fantastic stuff. The topic tonight is uh, this, this ghostly stuff. Uh, do they appear in a particular place at a particular time? Is there, uh, could you set your clock by it? Is it uh, Midsummer's Eve or the winter solstice? What's going on? Uh, the, kind of the, the questions on my mind tonight. And uh, Angela, fantastic call, seems to think that maybe people are the conduit. That if you can sense these things, you sort of bring them out of the environment around you. Good thoughts, great stuff. Thanks for the calls. If you want to be a part of the show tonight, 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. This is Troubled Minds. I'm Michael Strange. And tonight, we're telling ghost stories on the internet. If you love this sort of thing, don't go anywhere. More after the break.
from a secret bunker just off the extraterrestrial highway. Somewhere in the desert sands outside of Las Vegas. From somewhere in space time, loosely labeled Generation X on planet Earth. Asking questions of you, in earnest, into the digital darkness. Good evening and welcome to Troubled Minds Radio. I'm your host, Michael Strange, and this is a show where we talk about all the things we're not allowed to talk about. You know what those things are? Aliens, conspiracy, the paranormal, the government, academia, the 24-hour news cycle propaganda, and the general feeling that we live in the Upside Down. This show is live. We are streaming on Facebook, DLive, and YouTube. We are broadcasting live on the Fringe FM. If you want to be part of the show tonight, we are talking about ghosts. Not just ghosts, your old-fashioned ghost story. We're talking about where do they appear? Are there particular hot spots? And if there are, are there particular times of year? That maybe influences this. Angela called in not too long ago and said that she believes it's the people involved, possibly, that are sort of the conduit, the antenna that can reach out and bring spirits from the netherworld into ours. What do you think? As always, this is the question show, not the answer show. I'd love to hear from you. 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. And uh, we're taking your phone calls. You, you, you can be part of the show by joining the Discord if you don't like the 702 area code, which, of course, is Las Vegas, where we're streaming from and broadcasting from. And uh, we have a phone call, so we're going to go straight to that. Uh, we have multiple lines, though, so if you want to be part of this and have some stories you want to tell us about your theories on ghosts, uh, why they appear, particular places or you think if the conduit is the people you tell me i'd love to hear about it let's go to james looks like james james in michigan what's up my friend you're on trouble minds with mike how are you i am good thank you for having me thanks for calling in uh what's your take on the, the ghostly stuff what do you think about this well um i'm i'm also um salcedo media and in, in the fringe chat i've been commenting a lot and i was just going to comment but it's just this is my favorite subject. So, um, I think there are several different things that can lead to um, sightings and and just paranormal paranormal events events in general. I think sometimes it is a person. Um, sometimes it is the events that happen in the place that that leaves um, energy there that people can um, sense and then and and see or hear. Um, kind of like recordings, but um, you know they're playing back in in physical space. Um, but yeah, I think there's a lot of different factors, and I I definitely think that it can be the person. But I think there are different levels of sensitivity because I've had events throughout my life here and there, but I know that there are other people that have experiences every day, and I, I don't have that. But um, I've had enough where I'm, I, it's got me into researching the topic and even doing it, doing my own podcast about it. So, yeah, I, I did yeah. see that. Uh, what's what's the podcast name? Oh, it's Salcedo Paranormal. Okay, Salcedo Paranormal. So, so uh, there you go. Check it yeah. out, guys. Check it out, guys. A new podcast to check out if you haven't heard of it. Uh, give James some love here. So, so okay. So, so you have had some of these experiences, and. Uh, you th- you think it just depends on the person? It, it, like there's different levels of sensitivity. Uh, are you able to maybe turn this on or turn it off, or is it something that kind of just happens to you? For me, it just happens uh, um, once in a while. I think that some places can um, be. I think that some places can have energy. It's just that not everybody always picks it up, you know. And um, and it can also. I think it can kind of come and go or, or get stronger and weaker over time. Um, so, and so, yeah, I've had a lot of experiences. I, I had my first one. I can tell you about it real quick if you want. When I was a kid. Sure. We've got time. Go ahead. Okay. Well, um, 
I like to focus on experiences that I had with others, which I don't have very many of those, but this is one. Um, I went to visit my cousin um, and at this house that his family had just moved into. And um, they were still unpacking everything, and there was stuff all over the house. And, but um, they had a, a basement that, at the time, that it was seemed really big. And I was maybe maybe about 12 years old. I didn't really know anything about your stereotypical ghost story tropes about you know not not being in the basement about basements being creepy. Um, but so we were on this couch bed, and we were um, getting ready to go to sleep. And in the back, where there were no lights on, um, we saw a, it was a woman, that, but just the head from um, above this clothesline that had a sheet on it. And all we could see was this older woman's head. And, but the clothesline was up near the ceiling. And we didn't see anything on the floor beneath the clothesline. Um, so, and, and, um, she was looking at us and she was, it was almost like we got the sense of her wondering, who are you and why are you here? And, um, another thing I should mention real quick is I'm legally blind, but even though this figure, um, was, should have been beyond my, my range of, of vision, I could see every detail about her perfectly fine that's interesting Um, and my cousin could as well so 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 it seems to not even be a visual thing it's it's sort of uh tapping into your brain and kind of uh, maybe communicating in a telepathic manner not just uh through that feeling of uh, asking who are you why are you here but also visually like like kind of tapping into the visual portion of your brain that's 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 incredible i've never heard that before well, and it was amazing because I, I mean, I was a kid, but I still knew I shouldn't have been able to see anything except for just a blur, you know? Um, but yeah, that was my first, the first part of my, my first experience. And I, I've had them on and off over the years and places, some of the places that I've lived in and stayed in, but then also just other random places. So, and, and not always, you know, hardly ever places of, like major national significance as far as I know, you know, just ordinary places I visit, I, I go to. Right. Not like, so, not like um, Gettysburg for instance, or things like this. It just seems to be everywhere and you, you can kind of draw them out at times. I, I can see that happening. I mean, yeah, sometimes. battlefields are not just the only places where dr- traumatic things happen. They happen all over the world. So I, I de- could definitely see that. And I think also sometimes it's not always traumatic stuff. Um, I've heard of it just being sometimes people um, leave their energy behind when they do the same things over and over again, um, whether it's walking from one place to another or, you know, it can just be um, just be things that they did constantly. Okay. Can sometimes leave, you know, images of them doing that. Like a routine, just a just a simple uh, routine, right. like an energy imprint. So, so what do you think it is then? So, right. in so, in some uh, like some circles, they say that these are trapped souls that that can't leave the earth for some reason until they, you know, the old ghost trope is that they have to complete some, you know, something. Something has to be resolved for them to leave and pass on and become part of the rest of the energy or whatever. But then another one, another theory says that they're they're not spirits at all it's just this energy residual energy that kind of is uh carrying out these these patterns like you suggest there do you, th- do you think there's a correlation or they're two different things or not related at all i think there can there's I see, my big thing is i think there's all things are possible i don't think there's any one explanation to to all of this i think there can be some cases where it is a, a spirit that is trapped in a place for whatever reason um, I think in other cases it can just be residual um, hauntings, as in just people doing routines. Um, I think that also the last caller mentioned that um, they thought it could be uh, aliens in, in some cases, and I, I've I've grown to to accept that possibility as all of the, the everything in the paranormal being connected in one way or another in some cases. 
Right. So, so, so it, it, yeah. it is interesting how the, the those two worlds have kind of collided uh, more recently, that the extraterrestrial phenomena has now become possibly a dimensional thing, which, of course, is the same thing as a ghost. I mean, literally by definition, right? And we're talking right. about ghosts from the netherworld or wherever this happens to be, purgatory or Sheol or, I mean, there's a thousand terms for it here. So, you know, and I, some of those are negative. I don't mean it like that. I'm just kind of mythologically speaking. Uh, so, yeah, great stuff, man. Uh, I, I did share your, your podcast there, SalcedoParanormal.Podbean.com. Thanks for the link there, Brian Space. Uh, shared it out to the whole stream. Everybody's seen it. Give uh, give James some love, guys. Smart guy here. I had some experiences and got a podcast talking about it. Uh, fantastic stuff. So so what about, so you say there's a whole bunch of stuff happening with, um, with uh, maybe, maybe many factors at play. So do you think that in particular, have you heard or maybe you're convinced that like Stonehenge or the, the Great Pyramids or, you know, like maybe Ley Lines or who knows? I don't know. I'm kind of talking about this particular place in England where they see on Midsummer's Day spirits on top of a ridge. But do you think that there's particular places where these are, there are hot spots where people are more likely to see this stuff happen? I think that that's possible. I think a lot of it has can. Um, I've heard of, of of people saying that it can also depend on the energy of an area that is generated by the materials in the area. Um, as in the, the minerals and the stones and then uh, um, water moving, you know, I've, I've heard that those can be things that can cause things to happen. So, okay, yeah, I think it's possible. Okay, right on. Right on. I appreciate that. Uh, thank you so much for the call and sharing your experiences. Anything else while we got you on the phone tonight? No, just um, great show, and thank you for having me on. Thanks for calling. Thanks for calling. Everybody follow James. This is uh, Salcedo Paranormal at uh, Podbean. Thanks for the call, man. We'll talk to you soon. Have a fantastic night. There you go. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, first time caller there. Uh, he's, uh, he's always active in the Fringe, the Fringe Discord. And if you haven't joined the Fringe Discord yet, fringe.fm slash chat. Lots of smart people in there. Lots of smart comments. Uh, like I said, I'm watching both Discords and uh, trying to keep up with all the chat. All the chat. But uh, fantastic stuff so far, guys. Uh, great call, Angela. Great call, James. Looking to hear from you. What do you guys think about all this stuff? Is this, uh, is this well... Um, is it extraterrestrial, right? I, th I think we can add that to the loop now. We've had a couple of people suggest that maybe uh, it could be one in the same. Is that, uh, you know, I think, and we've talked about this on this show before, kind of how these worlds seem to collide a little bit, meaning that uh, if you, um, if you, once you turn things into a dimensional conversation, really everything becomes possible, including, uh, uh, what would you say, like, uh, you know, these tic-tac UFOs that are, you know, possibly phasing in and out of wherever the heck they're coming from. So so we can open it up to that, too, if you guys have, uh, have takes on that. But so tonight, the, what really started the conversation, let's go back just to, uh, like I said, I understand people on radio kind of come and go and sit down and make dinner and come back and, you know, miss parts. So just just to recap here. We started here, all right? This is a, uh, an article by uh, LANCS.live, and it's talking about the Lake District Fell haunted by Phantom Ghost Army that appears in June. And so, in particular, it, uh, it got me thinking about hotspots, all right? So we've talked about uh, hotspots in the past. There's not only UFO hotspots. There's hotspot paranormal hotspots, like Gettysburg is one, like Night Stalker says there in the chat as well. Uh, there are there are places all over that are actual you know considered to be uh, the the basement of the Alamo. I've heard is is one paranormal hotspot, things like this, right? And so that is clearly probably a thing, all right. But then it, I started reading about this particular incident, and I'll I'll put the link up here. And there's there's several links on this where they're talking about kind of going out to find these ghosts up on the ridge, but uh, that they particularly only appear during a, um, a a particular time, meaning that in this case, uh, this uh, I'll just read read this so you guys can know what I'm talking about here. So, so if legend is to be believed, the fell side on the edge of Blencanthra, I can't I can't say it, Blencathra. There we go. The end seems like it should be on the other side. It's called Blencathra. Is home to this ghostly procession that has been witnessed on a few occasions at midsummer. The first time they were seen is said to have been during the evening of Midsummer's Day in 1735, where a servant claimed to have watched a line of soldiers both on foot and horseback marching their way across the fell just two years later the servants master and other family members witnessed the same strange sighting which was apparently five men deep however many locals refused to believe both tales 
But 10 years later, on Midsummer's Day evening in 1745, the spirits would be seen by no less than 26 people who were described as sober and respected, neither of which would be me, by the way. I just want to point that out. And they even testified on earth, uh, sorry, (laughs) on oath as to what they had seen. They claimed to have watched a line of marching troops, cavalry, and even carriages traveling along the summit ridge for hours. Now, this is, uh, this is what we're talking about. So in particular, not only did, did these, the, these particular uh, apparitions, ghosts, spirits, whatever you want to call them, have showed up uh, in this particular spot, it seems to be at a particu- particular time, Midsummer's Day, which is, of course, is the summer solstice, the longest day of the year. Which, let's look at this. So I pulled up a little bit of this. Like I said, I know that there's a, we got people on this network on Fringe and uh, lots of other folks are very, very in tune with the, uh, you know, the, the, pagan, the, the pagan calendars and the, the ritual stuff. And I'm not. Uh, so I think it's fascinating. I like to consider the possibilities. Uh, but I, I'm not an expert in this at all. So uh, again, that's why I talk about it kind of in the, in the sense that we do and lean on you for your, for your takes on this stuff. But okay, so this in particular, it happened on Midsummer's Day, all right? And, and that's when they say these spirits actually uh, start to appear. Now, Night Stalker's got a theory in the chat there. He's uh, talking on the Fringe FM chat where he says that uh, it's possible that uh, during these particular times, portals are opening up. And that's what's allowing these, uh, these apparitions or these whatever they are, these entities to come through. So here we go. So this year, this is for this year, Midsummer is celebrated on June 24th. All right. So if you're going to go camping in that, that part of uh, England, uh, next week would be a great time maybe uh, to peep these, uh, peep these spirits up on the ridge there. But uh, June 24th, and it's a day that's meant for us to appreciate all the gifts that nature gives us. This is from nationaltoday.com. The summer solstice marks the longest day of the year, and that lands on June 20th. But because the old Julian calendar marked it differently, the date for Midsummer Day remains June 24th. The holiday originates from Sweden, but it's celebrated all over the world, and many use the weekend closest to the date for traditional festivities, which would be what, like a... like a summer festival, right? Like a like a that type of thing. So so you know th- this goes into uh, this is a good article. Uh, did I link it? Yeah yeah I linked it. Okay. So make sure I'm linking this stuff so you guys can see where I'm getting it and you can follow along. As always, I prefer you guys check my sources and make sure I'm not making this stuff up because I'm not. Uh, it's uh, it's sourced somewhere. Even if you think the sources are bunk, it's sourced somewhere, and you can follow up and find this information if you need it. And as always, you can uh, these sources these links I used for for every single show will always be in the description. You can find it on the podcast. You can find it on YouTube. You can find it on Facebook. It's always going to be in the description and you can go find these links that I'm sharing. So you don't have to try and scramble and take notes. Uh, It will be up after the show. So there you go. All right. So, so in this, you know, it goes through some of the, uh, the midsummer, right? Midsummer started as a pagan ritual for fertility and successful harvest during the stone age. The pagans believed that plants had healing properties during the summer solstice and they honored the day showing reverence to nature with rituals. They danced around maypoles, fashioned garnets, and herbs were picked on Midsummer's Eve, and bonfires were used to keep away any evil spirits. It was said that spirits were free to roam the earth when the sun was turning towards the southern hemisphere. And that's what I was looking for. So as I was looking looking through uh, some of the stuff and, you know, like it's a... I understand. Truth is a slippery fish, and I don't really expect to find answers per se. But I do like to see some of these ideas, and that's, that's really what I was looking for. Why on Midsummer's Day in particular would these apparitions appear in England in this particular place? All right. Um, Cumbria, I think it's called. Uh, so so in this now they're saying that uh, that the reason why that is, is it was said that spirits were free to roam the earth when the sun was turning towards the southern hemisphere, which, of course, would be uh, the summer solstice. So so, I, yeah, I mean, you know, this stuff, this stuff kind of makes sense to me. And so uh, like we've kind of stated before in, in the past and on different shows that it does seem that uh, with some of these things, including I guess you may, be, may even be able to take this to the UFO world, is that uh, maybe maybe there are particular times of the year where these, thing, these things happen based on maybe celestial events or things like this. So kind of, kind of what we're talking about here. Uh, Salcedo says a fell is a hill, mountain and or a cliff. Thank you. Paraphrase from dictionary.com. Appreciate that. Uh, that's a, I think that's a, an English term. I believe so. I don't think we use fellow here in the States, do we? And if we do, if we do, uh, 
<laughs> uh, then uh, I'm mistaken. Okay, let's see. We got. Uh, let's see. We got. We got all kinds of good chat I can read. All right, but we're looking to hear from you. Uh, what do you guys think about these stories? Do you think that? You know, in particular, like, you know, if more of the ones you're more familiar with is okay, kind of the Skinwalker Ranch or Gettysburg. We got some of that stuff we can talk about as we go tonight. But uh, what do you think? Do you think that uh, the, the particular hotspot is a place? Do you think it's a time, a, a time of year or a time of day or a combination? Like James said when he called in, he thinks it's a combination of many of those things. Uh, and Angela said that she thinks it's possibly the people that bring it. They're able to come and arrive in a particular area where these spirits may already reside, and you're able to kind of bring them out to you to maybe get your attention or you get their attention or some sort of thing happening there. So I don't know. Like I said, I know that uh, uh, James and Angela aren't the only ones who have experienced these these things. So uh, looking to hear hear from you guys tonight. And like I said, uh, the more stories we get like this, the more it kind of not only teaches me, it, uh, it, it just opens my eyes to a world that I can't see. And you see how valuable that can be, right? In, in many capacities, you can use that as a, an allegory or a metaphor for many things. And so in this, in this case, it's literal, but uh, I think that uh, once you start kind of uh, changing your, your actual um, paradigm, well, you shift your paradigm, right? I think that uh, things, things can change for the better. And so I, that's, that's why we do the show. That's why I've always done the show in this format. So if you want to be part of it, 702 702- Nine five seven one zero three seven. That's seven zero two, nine five seven one zero three seven. You can join the Discord at troubledminds.org, and also at fringe.fm slash chat. If you have not joined both of those, please do. And um, yeah, that's what's going on. Again, here we are. Right, a, a bizarre Thursday in June finds us telling ghost stories on the internet. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Yeah, that's what uh, that's what that's what's going on here. Uh, like I said, my detractors say, "What are you doing tonight, Mike? You telling ghost stories on the internet?" And I'm like, "Yep, <laughs> yes we are, yes we are." So looking to hear from you, we're talking about these particular areas that might be hotspots, paranormal hotspots. But not only that. Are there times of year that seems to bring them out? Halloween, clearly, right? The winter solstice, clearly. There are some pagan holidays that seem to line up with some of these things. However, I've never heard this one. The Midsummer's Day, where when the sun, the sun turns to the southern hemisphere, spirits become free to roam. So uh, there we go. That's uh, interesting. Like I said, I, I learned something tonight kind of looking into this. And I hope you did too. That's uh, why we get together and talk about these things. And if you have uh, experiences, you have ideas, you have a theory, thoughts on this, love to hear from you. You guys know what the deal is. Give us a call at 702-957-1037. That's 702 702- Nine five seven one zero three seven. Taking your phone calls. We are streaming live on Facebook, D Live, and YouTube. Broadcasting live on the Fringe FM. And this is Troubled Minds. And I'm your host, Michael Strange. And damn right, we're telling ghost stories on the internet and having a hell of a time. Looking to hear from you. Don't go anywhere. More conversation after the break. Welcome back to Troubled Minds. I'm your host, Michael Strange. We are streaming on Facebook, DLive, and YouTube. We are broadcasting live on the Fringe FM. Tonight, we're taking your phone calls, telling ghost stories on the internet, talking about particular hotspots, areas where apparitions seem to appear. In the past, we've talked about the night mar- marchers of Hawaii. Tonight, we're talking in particular about maybe uh, battlefield hotspots or this particular spot on a fell in England where on Midsummer's Day, they seem to see a procession, a ghostly procession of years past. And 
probably, possibly, uh, some sort of army or some sort of something on the move on the march. And uh, so the question, as kind of looking through some of this stuff, I, uh, it, you know, it dawns on me that, okay, wait, so if, if this stuff actually happens and people see these things, not just in particular areas, they see them a- at particular times of the year, right? And so clearly uh, everybody knows about, you know, the, thin, the, the veil being thinnest around Halloween and, you know, the, 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 summer sol- or the winter solstice and these things. But it intrigued me to wonder if, uh, if this particular midsummer phenomenon that was happening in England, up on the cliff, up on the fell, as they call it, was an actual, uh, maybe triggered by not just the space, but also the time of year. And, and oddly enough, it was the midsummer's day, uh, very much, uh, maybe not exactly the summer solstice, but right during the same week, just a s- several days apart here. And, uh, you know, a, a, as uh, mostly attributed to a pagan holiday right and so um, i don't know like uh as always uh, looking to hear from you guys looking to hear some good stuff and uh your takes on this like i said i don't know the answers to these things i just uh fascinated and love asking the questions so if you want to be part of this i'd love to hear from you tonight 702-957-1037 that's 702-957-1037 you can join the discord and uh we'll uh, we'll continue talking about this stuff uh all right we we do have a phone call so we have multiple lines so don't worry there's room for you and i'm gonna leave the phone number up for a sec but we're gonna go to matt in california what's up my friend you're on trouble minds how are you hey mike how's it going good good show tonight Right on, thank you. What do you think about this uh, stuff, I'll man? Talk about, yeah, go ahead. I uh, talk about the um, the spirits of the land. Um, so the Romans they called it. I'm going to try to say it. They called it Genoas Loki. I'm going to spell it. It's G E N U S space L O C I, um, and that's what they called um, the spirits of the land. And so when we talk about things like, you know, the pagan or uh, they worship these old spirits of the land so like the sacred sites like um the egyptian pyramids and stonehenge um it's like imprinted in that people were worshiping these spirits and that's why when you go to these places you have like um kind of like you it's easier to like go into a trance like state and uh so like certain things like um when you walk into church if you get like lightheaded it's like the energy is like imprinted there and there's different energies imprinted from like you know a playground has different energies than say you know a prison Okay. Yeah, that makes sense to me. That definitely makes sense. It's uh, so so. Actually, with that said, I think maybe that can explain some of the residual energy. It's like a, uh, and that's a great example, yeah, yeah, by the way. Energy. So you have yeah, right. So you have like a playground, and it's like literally, it's positive residual energy. But a prison would pretty much be the opposite of that. But it's still energy. It's just uh, you know, the tone or the darkness of that energy uh, from the two different places are very different. So yeah, that, that's a great point, man. I never thought of it in those terms, but yeah, fantastic. But uh, go ahead, continue. If you want to experiment, if you want to experiment with this, um, one of the things you can do it at home, but I suggest first um, doing it outside um, in nature. Is um, so next time you're on an adventure, okay? Next time you you know go to the beach, a park, or go to you know go camping, go out for the day. Um, go to the the place, the land, and stop on the threshold of it. So like the you know the crossing into you know the park or wherever the beach, wherever you're going. Stop. Just kind of take a deep breath, and it might sound silly, but either, you know, just say like a prayer or some sort of communication link with the spirit of the land, just, you know, hey, spirit of the land, you know, grant me passage, um, you know, to like bond with the spirit of the land. And what you'll find is that when you go to these, you know, camping or wherever, you'll find that your adventures will be more fulfilling and more, um, I guess, like less harsh. So like the land will like open up to you because you ask permission and like thank the land, be polite to it like a person and try to have like a bond with it. And then it will show you like new hidden passages. They'll let you experience the nature more fully than if you just go in there, you know, and you're just trashing around in place, you know, um, the spirit of the land will allow you to have a better experience. And so you could do it at home too, with your own um, land, like go to a tree on your house and just try to make like a bond with the land and even like a, an offering of some sort, like just water, Um, water a tree and just like try to make a bond with the land and you'll find that your um you'll find you'll you know your energy will flow better i guess you could say like current would flow with the current of the land instead of going against it yeah that makes sense and so so maybe in ancient terms uh there's a you we're we're describing communing with nature spirits of sorts you're it's kind of like um 
maybe uh, professing you're there kind of peacefully, right? Kind of, uh, you know, it's uh, you're, you're there to reciprocate good energy, right? It's kind of like a, like a statement of that, right? Kind of to the nature at large, right? Exactly. More like tuning into, yeah, tuning into the place you're at. Um, and then, like I said, you'll, your current will flow with it if you're working together instead of against the land. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense to me. So I've got some actual stuff here. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not running you off the phone. You're welcome to stay as long as you like. Uh, that corroborates exactly what you're talking about. So interestingly, as you know, I kind of go through, do some rabbit hole stuff when we talk about these things and we don't always get there. Um, but to, tonight, you know, like a, when I don't know a lot about something, I like to read more. Uh, so I, we, we go into these shows a little bit more prepared. And so the thing that you're describing actually came up exactly when I was uh, trying to find out uh, from different sources on the internet, of course, where the, uh, the veil is most thin and when, and uh, exactly like you're describing there, one of the things, uh, which uh, I'll pull up the source and talk about it in a sec here, but was that uh, they said when, you be, when, when you're crossing a threshold in nature, meaning that uh, as a park ends and a lake begins, right, any, any sort of waterways, any sort of um, uh, these types of things, right? So as a forest ends or a beach begins or there's a lake or there's always something, there's a transition in the nature from one area to another and that's where you're supposed to do something like you're describing right yeah and then also um with the timing with the thing we're talking about tonight um on the summer solstice with the timing um the you know the old religion they worship um they worship the eight holy days and so it's like a a wheel of a year um on the like the sabbaths that they worship and um yeah it looks like uh, imagine you know a pirate um a pirate boat wheel, like sticking out like a slice of a pie, a circle with eight lines and uh, each one representing, you know, a holy day. And we worship them, you know, worship accordingly to the spirits of the land at that timing. And so, yeah, it's all on there. The, um, the equinox, the solstice, all the things. And then uh, of course, you know, Halloween is on, that's one of the big um, celebrations is on um, October 31st. Here we celebrate October 31st, the night. But a lot of other um, places, they celebrate, you know, the, um, the day, the next day. So uh, it'd be November 1st, they celebrate the day. And so if you take that, if you take that line, uh, like I said, there's a circle like a pie, um, and you, you know, follow the line straight across, you'll get in six months from October 31st is May 1st. I and see. so it's the same thing. They say, you know, the veil is thinnest at, um, the, you know, Halloween. Um, to go into the dark season. Well, it's the same way on the opposite end in May. It's the veil is thin, but we're, um, how do you say, welcoming in the next season, springtime. Right, the spring season. So it's all about timing, too. So timing has a lot to do with this stuff. Um, so it's interesting to me that it's kind of like combined. It's the land itself and the timing that we're going through into the next you know, phase of the season. Is how you say it? Yeah. Um, so, you know, astrological things are going on. So that, um, that's what we're looking at. And so we line those up and see, um, maybe there's something more we have to look at there to see, like, hopefully, you know, now that this is, we're talking about this, maybe people can go out there and, um, on the summer solstice and go out there and get some like video footage of this. Yeah. Let's see it. I'd love to see it. I'd love to see this stuff. And unfortunately, uh, so, so, you know, we do a video stream as well. We're doing the the radio stuff here and uh, we, we just can't play any of the footage because it's all, it's all like super copyrighted and they'll like instantly take the stream down. (laughs) Otherwise I would, there's, there's some compelling stuff, you know, like, like as always, you know, you, you watch a bunch of UFO videos or a bunch of ghost videos and just a grotesque portion of it is just so fake. But then sometimes you see some stuff that looks like, Oh oh, snap. Like what is going on here? Right? Like, is this real? And there, it's out there. It exists, man. It exists. I, there's enough for me to, to not discount this outright for sure. Well, that, that's why we have the Discord. Yeah, amen. Exa- Join the Discord. Share those videos. <laughs> Join the Discord. Share the, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll share some after we're, after we're done here. Some of that Gettysburg stuff you can't share. <laughs> They'll take the stream down immediately. Uh, so, okay. So then, so how about you? Do you have any kind of a, a actual uh, maybe paranormal switch that you can maybe turn on or to, turn off? Or is this something that's kind of not really in your wheelhouse like me. Like I'm, 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 it's basically dead to me. Like I I don't, I don't see things. I like, I don't see dead people. You know, I I say that tongue in cheek, but uh, do you, do you see or experience these things ever? Um, yeah, I'm, you know, into it. I 
you don't like to put words like empath or medium or whatever you want. I don't like to use like words like that to call myself that. But yeah, I've, um, like I said, I've been practicing it and like try, I'm like trying to learn it, you know, like, trying to study it and trying to understand it and experience it um, from that level. And so, you know, I've seen some things, uh, but the whole thing with this whole, we're talking about tonight, the timing and all that, I think, I think it's just something that um, it's old, it's ancient. It's been around since, you know, the ancients were, the ancients like knew this stuff about, um, you know, the world's, you know, astrological events occurring, I guess. And so they knew about it. So I believe there's power there and we just have to study it and learn it and maybe try to understand it instead of, we always put it off as, you know, it's like the woo <laughs> always the woo the, the 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 double woo the woo woo yeah, yeah man so go ahead go ahead yeah i mean uh, i got stories but that's you know, we'll talk about that another time okay cool uh we got time if you want to tell a story uh no we get uh ghost stories and all but um i don't have any stories that line up with what i'm talking about tonight like how i said it gotcha. happens on a solstice or on a certain day of the year okay Fair it's enough. just kind of it's like it's off and on for me okay Fair enough. Fair enough. I appreciate it, my man. Anything else while we got you on the phone tonight? Um, no, thank you, Mike. Um, keep it up. Have a good night. Uh, last couple of shows have been really good, so thank you. Thanks for listening. Thanks for the call. You're the best, Matt. We'll talk to you soon. Have a great have night. A night. There, there you go. As simple as that. If you guys want to be part of the show, we're talking about ghosts tonight. And not just uh, the old-fashioned ghost, right? Like the, uh, the what was it, the night, uh, night before Christmas? No, not like that. Uh, what was that, Nightmare Before Christmas, the cartoon? Uh, not like that, but Ghost of Christmas Past. We're talking about actual like apparitions that appear. Uh, in particular, that we talked about, we started with one that happened in uh, Cumbria in England. Cumbria, Cumbria. I don't know how to say it, uh, but uh, they're they're apparitions that appear up on a particular ledge or hillside, mountaintop. And people see them, uh, and it goes back hundreds of years, actually, back to the 1700s, where people have seen these apparitions that seem to appear around Midsummer's Day, which, again, right, kind of started, got my brain thinking about, okay, wait, so clearly there's going to be paranormal hotspots, right? There's, they, they exist. Like, like, like we said, Gettysburg. Uh, we've said, uh, you know, Skinwalker Ranch, the, this particular place in Cumbria and in England. You could probably mention tons and tons and tons more, right? And you go down the list. There's probably a huge list of these places. But then it got me thinking, not just the place, what about the time? What about the timing of this? And, uh, you know, in this particular case, they only were able to see these apparitions on Midsummer's Day or Midsummer's Day Eve, okay? Yeah, so I started looking into it, of course, as, as I do. And, you know, it led down many rabbit holes and many stories. But here we go. Let me bring this up. This is from... Uh, a young lady by the name of Amanda, uh, what is this? Let's go to the top. Amanda Lynette Meter, M-E-D-E-R, M-E-D-E-R. And I'm going to link it so you guys don't have to remember her name. Uh, and uh, thank you for the, uh, the fantastic sources out there, the, you, uh, you internet warriors that put up some amazing, amazing content. I appreciate it a lot. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share this around. And uh, please give some love to these sources because uh, this, is, this is the type of stuff that makes the show go around when uh, you know, people put good information out there that we can kind of uh, put, into, put into one good conversation. You know what I'm saying? So there we go. So this is from uh, this young lady, and she's talking about not only uh, – the, so the article is like – it starts like this. When and where is the veil thinnest? All right? When and where? Now, not only, not only when and where, interestingly, so she's talking about – there's three types, three different types of ways to experience a thin veil is what she's saying. Number one, and this is what Angela said a little bit earlier, you or a particular person can have a thin veil, meaning that you bring it with you, right? And so it doesn't have to be the particular place, but you bring it with you when you seem to bring spirits out of the woodwork, uh, for lack of a better term. Uh, and then it continues more. Uh, number two, there can be times of days and of the year when the veil is thin. And I was like, aha, I'm onto something. There's something up with Midsummer's Day, right? And so there's, there's some, uh, some other interesting uh, information here. And number three, there are locations with specifically thin veils, she says, all right? Pretty good stuff. So uh, let me uh, go down the bottom here, the, most, uh, the one that made me go, oh, okay, I see. Uh, so spirit, uh, here we go. So what happens at a, no, 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 what's, uh, here we go. All right. 
Thin Veil locations. And this is, of course, what I was looking for uh, in particular of uh, a hotspot, right? So a hotspot, a, a paranormal hotspot, is a, a location on the globe somewhere where the veil is more thin. Now, the, according to this young lady, Amanda Meter, M-E-D-E-R, she says this. There are many locations where there are thin spots between earth and spirit, but the easiest way to find them for yourself is in the spaces where a meeting of the world exists. And this is what Matt was saying. Usually, places that are vortexes also have thin veils. She says, where the veil is thin on the globe. Number one, at meetings of land and water. What's up, Night Stalker, talking to you. Number two, at meetings of day and night. So we're talking about, in particular, dusk and dawn, right? Uh, Number three, at ecosystem edges, kind of like we were saying, like Matt said, if you go camping and you kind of come into that space, into the nature space from where you were, as you pass over into that threshold, uh, you sort of make that uh, that commune with the nature spirits uh, as, you know, kind of the, the, the sentiment, uh, I come in peace and, uh, you know, let's, uh, let's make this a good time and et cetera, so on. This continues. Number four, places where lots of natural energy generates, such as waterfalls, right? Water, that's, uh, that's one of the big ones, not just lakes, oceans, waterfalls, rivers, seems to be uh, very, very uh, supernatural in, in terms. And interestingly about that, uh, if you're watching, uh, spoiler alert, uh, Skinwalker Ranch, they're, they're wondering if there's a river that runs underneath Skinwalker as part of the, the latest uh, revelations of what they're, that's not confirmed, it's just a theory they kind of tossed out as maybe part of the weird phenomena that's happening in that particular area, but but interesting, waterfalls, rivers, that type of thing. Uh, it continues, anywhere where two ecosystems overlap, uh, okay, uh, and then it says, uh, here's another one, and this is where we get to the battlefields, right? Mass soul transition sites. And so a place like Gettysburg or maybe this place in um, uh, Cumbria where you get this uh, maybe army that uh, that was on the march and uh, ended up getting massacred. It's hard to say, right? Uh, But that's I think that's very clear. Or like uh, Matt was saying with the energy in the prisons and places like this. uh, Yeah, so it continues. Uh, Places where energy meridians overlap. And then, of course, uh, geological hotspots like, um, you know, where, wherever. P- pick a spot on Earth and uh, there you go. There you go. So, so I don't know. Like I said, it, it is interesting kind of when you start uh, going down some of these rabbit holes and the information that you find that's from, from the old days. That's from, you know, the days of yore where they were discussing this stuff. And uh, like Matt said, it, it's been, this has been going on for a long time. We're just, you know, me in particular, I'm, I'm discovering these things. But I think humanity uh, is rediscovering these things. I think that uh, I think we owe a lot to the ancients uh, for paying close attention uh, to being to being probably in tune with those nature spirits, like Sherry said in the chat there on Facebook. What's up, Sherry? Uh, elementals of such, right? Nature spirits. Uh, it makes sense to me. It just makes sense that imagine if you if you stripped away all of our technology. Right. And so and so, you know, there's those arguments that people make. Well, you know, are the ancients, they couldn't have possibly done these uh, perfect astronomical charts. I don't know, like literally strip away everything we have. And there's no Internet. There's no television. There's no anything. Right. All you got's like a campfire at night. To me, I think it'd be pretty easy to go sit next to the same tree every night and just draw a picture of the sky. Right. You're in the same damn spot every single day. And if you just look up at the sky and you draw it as it changes, I think it wouldn't be, you know, that difficult to really ascertain what the hell's going on out there. So, you know, in any case, like I said, if you spend enough time and pay enough attention, I think uh, nature has a way of kind of paying you back. And that's a, and that's a, I think that's just a basic example of that. But anyway, as we go, we got a few minutes left. If you guys want to be part of the show, 702-957-1037, that's 702-957-1037. One zero three seven. We're talking ghosts tonight, and not just like you're like I said, not the old old fashioned you know ghost of Christmas past. We're talking about particular hot spots, maybe. We're talking about uh, different times of year where maybe these things uh, happen, where the the veil is most thin or thinnest, as they say. I don't know. I don't know. Like, uh, I don't have these answers, but I do think that the conversation is fascinating, and that's why I bring it up, and that's why I think about it. But uh, it is notable 
that the uh, the actual Midsummer's Day is coming up next week, next Thursday, a week from today. And so well, that's why I thought it was more relevant, and that's why it popped up in the news. It's actually a kind of a new news story here because they're uh, d- describing what may happen next week for Midsummer's Day when, uh, when as, as it said, the, the sun turns to the southern hemisphere and uh, the spirits are free to roam. So, um, yeah, again, like I said, I don't have the answers here. I'm just kind of kind of spitballing and trying to make sense of the world just like you. But um, good stuff. I think this is really good stuff. So so as we do, as we do this and we continue, if you guys like this show, do me a favor. Spread the word. So just say, hey, look, there's a conversation going on that's uh, it's fascinating. It's not, uh, you know, we don't we don't have to have a gigantic ego and all the answers all the time. All right. We can get together and say, well, you know, I think it could be a number of things and I'm not really sure what the answer is. And that's what a conversation should be about. Right. We should be able to agree or disagree and shake hands and uh, still be friends tomorrow. And I, I truly believe that. That's why we've always done it this way in this format. That's why we've uh, th- that's what this show has always been about. So uh, like I get like I say, spread the word, tell a friend. Uh, that's how these things grow. And if you enjoy the show, I appreciate you very much. If you uh, would spread the word and let people know that there's a good conversation going on most nights of the week. And um, yeah, here on the Fringe FM, all kinds of good stuff. Seven nights a week, actually, on the Fringe FM. So, all right. And uh, as, as we finish, we got a couple minutes left. But, but the thing is this, right? G- given all these things we talked about tonight, I don't know. Like, I learned some stuff, for sure, kind of digging into this, right? Because, uh, you know, the way I format the show, I, 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 I get a couple slices of things, and then I'm like, okay, I got some questions now. So let's kind of dig in and see what people are saying on the Internet about these uh, in terms of answers and then discuss them. So we get together, we hang out. Yeah. Thumbs up, thumbs ups guys in the, in the chats and all this stuff, please do the things that helps, helps the algorithms and all that. But then, uh, you know, it, formatting the show, it's a, it, 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 it kind of spawns more questions and there's always more because of course being humans, a complicated thing, is it not? I think it is. I really think it is. But okay, as we finish, as we as we finish this up tonight, uh, just to let you know, uh, we do Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific on Fringe FM and DLive and Facebook and YouTube. I also do a new show on uh, Monday and Friday at 3 p.m. Pacific, and it's exclusively on Twitch. And then 24 hours later, we kick it over to YouTube and the podcast feed and everything else. But if you want to catch that live Monday and Friday, 3 p.m., which we'll, uh, we'll be doing tomorrow at 3 p.m. on Twitch, if uh, you can't get enough troubled minds, I appreciate that a lot. I put a lot of work into this, and I hope you enjoy it. I hope you had a good time tonight. And uh, I hope the conversations continue. That's what this is all about. Like I said, uh, like I always say, uh, the, the bad news is we're done for tonight, at least on Fringe FM. Uh, and uh, the good news with that is, God willing, we have tomorrow. So thanks for listening, guys. You're the best. As we finish this up, let me uh, smash this outro music. And uh, let's get out of here. This has been Troubled Minds. I'm Michael Strange. If you're listening on the Fringe FM, stay tuned for Joe Roop lighting the void. If you're listening on DLive, Facebook, or YouTube, stay tuned for a third hour of Troubled Minds. And be sure, be strong, be true. Thank you for listening. From our Troubled Minds to yours, have a great night. know the deal we're going to take a two minute break and we're going to do a third hour of troubled minds still taking your phone calls you want to be part of the show 702-957-1037 
And I'd uh, love to hear from you. What do you guys think about this? Uh, I, I kind of like the uh, the nature spirits. I kind of like the uh, the winter solstice and the uh, summer solstice and the, the equinoxes and uh, all kinds of things here. Nature spirits, the elementals, and the conversation. Love looking to hear from you guys. And uh, two-minute break. What's up, Tam Bam? I see you there. We'll be right back. We'll be right back for one more hour of Troubled Minds commercial free and just uh, kicking it, hanging out with you guys. So going to play some quick music and uh, phone numbers up. Looking to hear from you guys tonight. What do you think? What do you think about all this stuff? And uh, I think it's good. I think it's good. I think this is a good conversation. Like I said, uh, if uh, usually if I'm having a good time, I think uh, hopefully it translates and you are as well. So uh, I'm having a good time tonight and I'm not. Sometimes it's forced. You know what I'm saying? You end up like kind of grinding through. You're like, oh, shit. And what's next? Nah, man, not tonight. <laughs> that's it. Just kind of flowed. And, and that's thanks to you guys. Thanks to the fantastic calls, all the great chat, et cetera, so on. Playing some music, and we'll be back. Two-minute break. Two-minute break. More Troubled Minds in just two minutes. Don't go anywhere. It's close enough. Something like that. So what's up, guys? Welcome uh, welcome back to the show. We're, uh, this is Troubled Minds. I'm Michael Strange, and we're hanging out. We're talking about uh, spirits tonight. And not just your old-fashioned ghost story. Sort of. Maybe uh, looking into what what is this veil? What happens when you pierce the veil? What happens when the Midsummer Festival happens? Is it uh, part of a spiritual event that uh, possibly draws the paranormal? And uh, that's what we're talking about. That's the idea tonight, and uh, looking to hear from you. As always, uh, a good conversation so far. Like I said, uh, if, I, if I love uh, thinking about it and talking about it, I hope you do as well. And we got good stuff. We got good stuff going on here. So we're going to continue to talking about this and thinking about this tonight because that's what we do. Third hour. So uh, you can. Uh, it's, it's time to uh, go ahead and uh, drop the trousers and uh, let your hair down and uh, pound a little bit of whiskey and uh, talk about ghosts, ghost stories on the Internet, right? So as we do, looking to hear from you, 702-957-1037. I got more to talk about, of course. I got tons, tons, tons more here. But uh, let's see. What else do we got? Let's go to the chat. Let's say hi and be social. And uh, what's up, Tam Bam? I see you there. Uh, what's going on? What's up, Sherry? Uh, <laughs> I'm not reading that, Sherry. I'm not reading that comment, but that's funny. Uh, Tam says, uh, have any of you seen the YouTuber called Hassan Barbar? Uh, he has awesome content on uh, ghosts and he hunts them. Uh, I haven't seen that actually in particular. Uh, I'll check it out. Kelly says the Hoya Baisu Forest, I'm probably mispronouncing that like I mispronounce everything, is considered the most haunted forest in the world located in Romania. Hundreds of people have gone missing, seen UFOs, seen orange red balls of light, mist, Women's laughter, uh, voices, laughter, and people being scratched. In the center of the forest lies a circle where plant life doesn't grow. This spot is believed to be part of a portal to another dimension. Huh? That sounds scary as hell, man. Uh, I've never heard of that. That's amazing. So, so that would kind of be in line with exactly what we're talking about, right? Some sort of actual uh, nature portal um, of, of sorts. Of sorts. Uh, let's see. What's up? What's up, Tam? Thank you. Very nice. So we can never get enough of troubled minds. Thank you. That's very nice of you. Uh, Kelly says, so from my research into this phenomenon, the shadow type beings people are interdimensional beings. They are, uh, but the other things uh, seen as ghosts that take the resemblance of people, presumably dead and their loved ones that return for at least a goodbye, um, uh, or something to that effect, or it could be some that are trapped here and can't leave. And, and again, that's that's kind of a fascinating uh, topic right there. Is that uh, so? It, so okay, many people believe in ghosts, right? Some people don't. Fine, many people do. Uh, what do you think they are? Are they the two different uh, versions of like we discussed earlier? Just meaning that uh, are some trapped spirits that can't leave, like actual human spirits that are here for some reason. And uh, in that uh, sheol or purgatory or, or that state of transition that just cannot resolve, whatever that happens to be. Or is it uh, like Matt was saying that like there's different energies uh, and these residual energies are uh, very good with the analogy of the playground in the prison. And these energies uh, kind of collect over time because people are there with these uh, longstanding emotions. And these things uh, sort of uh, capture in time like a 
a residual energy that kind of repeats itself in patterns. And that, that could explain the ghostly phenomenon as well, right? The ghost phenomenon. I don't know. So like I said, uh, these, th- there's a couple different theories. I was just reading up tonight and kind of looking at, uh, into some of this stuff as, you know, as I do try not to come here completely unprepared. And, um, there's some, there's some fascinating stuff here and, and people putting out some really good work like that. Uh, I, I can't stress enough how good I think that blog is, um, from, uh, what was her name? Here you go. From, uh, she had the whole. She has her whole name on the domain. You know, when you put like a a whole full name on the domain, and you, you know, there's no spaces. It's Amanda Lynette Medeer, M E D E R, and uh, this was uh, published in 2014. But she's talking about what, where, when, and where is the veil thinnest. And uh, fascinating stuff here and talking about, uh, you know, three different ways to experience a thin veil. And like Angela said earlier, uh, you or a particular person can be the thin veil. It, like it, it comes with you. And so as a result, you're able to kind of see these things um, as a result of your just just your natural being. Uh, another one, there can be uh, times of day or time of the year where the veil is thin, kind of what we're talking about tonight and uh, not just particular hot spots with like a skinwalker or this particular place in, in, in England. Sorry, it's not the UK anymore. It's England. So forgive me for uh, for messing that up, guys. But uh, so in England and uh, this, uh, you know, like maybe this is the situation. It's a it's a place a particular area or a time of day, meaning midsummer, midsummer's day, right? Where they see these things or the locations, of course, which is, uh, you know, back to th- So we got time, we got location, and then we also have the people involved. And that's what uh, Salcedo actually said uh, when he called in earlier as well, that he said he thinks there's many factors at play here. And it's not just one of these. It's, uh, it's several of these. And it's so clearly, uh, you know, unscientific because you can't really – you can't really quantify it in that, you know, you're, you're with doing your little spreadsheet. You know, they're trying to. It's Skinwalker Ranch. I don't know if you guys are watching that show. Like I said, uh, I, I get irritated when I see grown men digging a hole to spooky music. But, uh, you know, when there's like magnetic and radiation anomalies and stuff going on all over the place, um, uh, you know, and that, that kind of comes and goes with time. I think that uh, I think we have a different a different situation there, right? A d- definitely a different situation. So so I don't know. It, it, it's compelling enough to keep me watching, even though, like I said, spooky music and grown men digging is not really like a scary thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> In any case, all right. So that's the conversation tonight. So uh, when is the veil thinnest? Is really what we're looking at. And so is it is it place? Is it time? Is it uh, the person? The people involved? And uh, looking to hear from you. Do you guys have uh, takes on this? Uh, again, uh, kind of like the nature spirits, like we said. Um, elementals, maybe, as Sherry brought up. Uh, these types of things. I mean, uh, I think there's a lot here, a lot to talk about. And uh, I'm just happy it's summer. Is anybody happy that it's, that's you know, let's, let's call it the summer after. Well, it's not really exactly summer yet, but we'll call it late spring. And uh, it's the summer after the dark winter. Does anybody feel better? Just better. <laughs> I mean, you know, a dark winter, winter transition. It seems to have shrugged off the weight, like the the the, the weight of Atlas off of our shoulders. I don't know. I I, I just feel um, I feel better. I hope I hope that you, uh, you know this this uh, positive notion is finding you guys as well. And uh, I hope I hope there's a uh, some some better going on out there. We uh, Lord knows we need it. It's been it's been a pretty brutal year uh, in many ways. But okay, looking here from you guys. So if you have uh, any uh, any uh, takes on this, uh, what do you think? What's going on with uh, the rest of this stuff? Seven zero two nine five seven one zero three seven. That's seven zero two. Nine five seven one zero three seven, and you can be part of the show, part of the show, and uh, we'll uh, we'll put you on, and we'll talk about all kinds of uh, sweet ghostly things or whatever else is going on out there. Um, let's see, let's see, uh, what else do we got? What else is happening? Uh, let's read the chat. Let's go to the chat. Now we're uh, we give a little more social off the radio. Yeah, there you go. Sherry says definitely something to look up in Romania. Yeah, I've never heard of that. That's that's pretty crazy. Yeah, Tam, I've heard of that one. Uh, Tam says uh, there's also that Japanese suicide forest that has tons of ghost sightings. I have heard of that one, where people go to hang themselves right in this particular like spooky forest. Yeah, yeah, crazy stuff. I do know about that one. Uh, Kelly says it's their true form anyway. We are all energy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Sherry says if you have noticed this motorcade, you can see he's on his way out soon, Mike. <laughs> 
Uh, I've noticed quite a few things. <laughs> I've noticed noticed quite a few things about about. I've noticed that the uh, that the <laughs> that the <laughs> the uh, what you call it uh, has has stood down. The uh, the deep state has basically stood down, and uh, yeah, now that they're they're happy, the president does what he's told. So <laughs> everybody everybody seems to be okay now that the unelected officials are back in power. <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, Tam says, I really do think that seeing a ghost or residual energy is a direct relation to an event or person with high emotional attachment or event. Yeah, and uh, kind of like that blog uh, was uh, discussing that there's uh, maybe uh, trauma involved. But uh, I, may, you know, I don't think that uh, it has to be. But I think you're right. I think there's probably that's what maybe triggers the, uh, the energy, right? The emotional energy. Uh, the, I mean, the, like, think about it. The most famous, like, spirit things are, you know, like the, the haunted house of, you know, Amityville Horror, right? Or like, you know, the, the poltergeist and, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the, the, the what's her name? Uh, the, the, the girl that was possessed, you know, from the, the exorcist, which, by the way, was based on a real story. It wasn't a little girl. It was a little boy. If you remember, we did that show back in the day with, uh, I think Frank was still here back then when we talked about the exorcist. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, this is the type of stuff, like I said, if you guys have takes on this, uh, looking to hear from you. Anybody have um, kind of some medium-type situations where you sense the energy or maybe you could tell it changes as the calendar changes, let's let's for instance, let's say this: um, if the the actual uh, energy you feel starts to change as the the calendar changes, meaning that as we as we draw near to the midsummer festival, as it would be, or the the summer solstice, which would be the longest day of the year. Do you feel like an actual change in energy and not just like me, like I said, I feel good coming out of the dark winter, lots of things, you know, they're not making us wear masks. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on that's like, you know, positive, but I mean, just like in general terms, like n- not nothing to do with that stuff. Just do you feel it? Do you sense it? Is it something that's, um, that's actually, um, well, uh, well, well, I don't know. Is it real? I guess, is it real? Uh, so that's what's going on. That's what's happening here. That's what we're talking about. And uh, give me a call. There's more to talk about, which I'll pull up and talk about in just a sec. But uh, I prefer to talk to you, as you guys know. There's a, I got lists of all these haunted places and all kinds of stuff. So I kind of like this article. Let's go back to this for just a sec. Uh, this is from, again, this is from uh, um, Amanda Lynette Meder, M-E-D-E-R. Really great stuff here, talking about uh, when the veil is most thin. Personal veils. I've never heard it in those terms, right? Actual personal veils. And so she says, some of us are naturally more sensitive to the unseen world. You may have heard of others call it, call it having thin skin. Uh, and then she says, in my post, Born with a Veil, you are, a, are you a natural born psychic? I talk about this and how we all have moments where our personal boundaries drop. And in these, we can have private moments of experience where the veil is thinnest for us. These moments are also known as piv- pivotal events change points or before and after moments when we are in a change moment our auric shell is shedding so temporarily thinner thus we may be more perceptive during these times personal veils can drop and this can be precipitated by a near-death experience the birth of a child or some other wrinkle in time in the brief moment of change, we experience a thin veil and some of us feel that charge in the air and that's what I'm asking do you guys feel that as the weather changes and not just the weather as the, maybe the, you know, the, 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 what would you call it? The Zodiac basically, right? The celestial events as the, the things go in circles and, you know, circles of circles and, you know, very complex stuff going on out there in the, uh, the cosmos. Uh, so anyway, sleep may be more frequently interrupted as it's buzzier around you, for example, she says. Uh, and the signs of a thinning veil can be similar to a spiritual awakening signs or other types of ascension signs. So good stuff. Like I said, personal times of the day, uh, you're, uh, again, uh, different places, different, uh, different times of the year. I think this is all great. I think it's all uh, like just... Like I said, it is a wide world after all. And what I mean is it's a wide, wide universe. There's a lot of things out there. So it does, uh, fascinates me worth talking about. But again, like I said, I got, I got a list. Don't make me go into my list of battles and start pointing out some of these other places where this stuff happens to kind of reinforce the points here. I'd rather talk to you guys. If you're ready, you're up 702-957-1037. You know the deal. I want to sip some whiskey. And if I'm talking constantly, I can't. So, uh, yeah, 702. 
Nine five seven one zero three seven. I say, look at that, Jay. I know Jay's listening to me because he jumps in the thing. He knows. He's all, damn it. I got to give Mike a second to sip some whiskey. Let's go to Jay in New York. Thanks, Jay. I appreciate it, buddy. <laughs> Thanks for giving me a second to six, sip some whiskey. How are you tonight, sir? I'm just a fuzz behind. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, no, no, um, no sweat. Take your time. No, that's all right. Um, all, all good. You're bouncing all over the place right now. We're talking about all kinds of different things. Um, get back to the paranormal from the beginning. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I sent you out that CD today. Hopefully it works out with Thank the you. pictures of it and stuff like that. But, you know, I owned a lot of buildings. I've worked in buildings that were vacant for, you know, 15, 20 years where there were murders and stuff like that. One dude was beat with a trophy. It was gruesome. But I'm telling you, there's weird, weird stuff that goes on, you know, the big flowing thing that you see in the poltergeist and stuff like that. I've never really seen anything like that. Some floaties on the corner of your eye, you know. Or the girl was killed downstairs in the basement of the temple that I bought there. But the mirror in the house, we have a mirror in the house. The house that I have is an old funeral home. There's a mirror in the house when you walk by it. There's always, like, like you know how when you look at a mirror, you can kind of look at the stuff that's in the corners of the room through the side of the mirror when you're looking directly into it. And when you walk by it, it always looks like there's somebody standing in the corner of the room. It's I, the lady who died here. I get you know? that sometimes too, where I'm like, "What the hell is that?" Right? And like, and you turn and you swear you saw somebody. I get that, but I don't know. I I I always feel like I'm tricking myself. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like your brain and the patterns and the. I don't know. I don't know. Like I don't know if I'm. You're tired. That. The lighting. Yeah. You yeah. Know, try to write all this up because if you say, "Oh, my house has got ghosts in it," people kind of think you're a little loony and they don't want to talk to you. Well, I mean, you know? I tell ghost stories on the internet for crying out loud. I'm not worried about being called a loon. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Well, yeah, but you, you know, you're doing pretty well. Well, I'm just saying. Um, I'm just saying. Thank, thank you. But I'm just saying. You know, like, I'm not worried about that. <laughs> But no, I see him. I, I mean, I do. I mean, you, you know, I mean, I work in old houses. That's what I do. You know, I'm right now I'm repairing round windows, you know, who the hell makes round windows, but these people want them repaired. So I'm over there just, you know, well, take one home, take it apart, take it home to the shop, make another one. It looks just like that one. Bring it back. Hope it fits. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds painful. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's brutal, dude. It, it is brutal. Wait, it so, is absolutely. so so you work in a ton of ton of old houses. Have you have you ever like run into them where you were like, no shit, for sure, this place is haunted. You ever had anything like that happen? The the one that I'm working in right now, for sure, no shit, this place is haunted because nothing that should be the simplest thing ever ever goes right. There is like a bad juju there. That has been going on since the place was built. The place was built in like, I'm going to say 1890. It's a little bit older than that, but a lot of stuff was built between like 1880 and 1890. So we'll put it on the high side just so there's not exaggeration. Okay. The place has had like 30 owners. Like people own it for two or three years and they sell it. And the family's doctor's office was in there for a little while. He remodeled it. He was in there for two years. He left. I'm telling you, there's a juju there that just ain't right, you know, built on an Indian burial mound or I don't know, man, there's something going on there that just ain't cool. Skinwalker. When you're there. <laughs> yeah, kind of like the same thing, Skinwalker Ranch, man. You know, there's just, that's something, you feel it when you walk in there. You know, I told you about going to the Serpent Mounds and stuff like that in Ohio and stuff like that. You like have a feeling of positive energy when you're when you're there, you know. It yeah. just it's just something peaceful about it. When you walk into this house, you're like, oh man, this sucks, man. There's something funk going on here. It's not that lady that has the cats downstairs neither, you know. But <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I got you. I got you. Something actually bad. Has mm-hmm. has anybody seen like a like a hammer levitate or anything like that? While you got while you're working on this stuff. I've seen like strings and stuff like that get wrapped around, like carrying ladders and stuff like that. The embalming room here in the house, the the funeral home that I bought, it's actually my house. But 
damn bombing room, there was a string hanging down that had a light that would melt your eyes out of your head and that be for, you know, doing the work that you were doing in there. And it was a string switch. A broom, dude. You could carry a broom through that room and that string would get wrapped around it so it would turn that light on. And I left it on. I left that light on until the light bulb burned out. <laughs> I never turned it off. <laughs> I leave the TV on. on. <laughs> I don't have a microwave in my house. I don't even own a microwave because the microwave would just at random times go on for like three minutes. Yeah, and not only that, you you were uh, a ways back when you called and you were talking about that microwave where they tested the water that they were microwaving. Remember? The, the, or, the yeah, the organic farm that I worked at. Yeah, yeah. The Cornell University did a study where they. They wanted to use the, it was all pond water, and it was straight pond water, filtered pond water, and microwave pond water, obviously cooled before they watered control groups of plants with it. And the microwave water plants did for, not on the air, um, not on the fringe. No. Um, did really bit poorly, you know? Yeah. That's not good. Uh, that's not good. It, that's not good. So, so well, I, I mean, imagine. that's what you're doing to your food when you're eating it, you know? Yeah, but. I rarely microwave things. Rarely, rarely. It's just not as good. Like, you know, you put it in the oven, you get a little, little bit crispy on the edges. You can't do that shit in the microwave. <laughs> it just doesn't work that well, way. Well, when you come down in the kitchen and stuff like that, and you're grabbing a glass of water in the middle of the night, and the dog's kind of standing there, staring off in space with the fur standing up on thing, the microwave kicks <laughs> on for three minutes. You take the microwave out of the... I saw a poltergeist when I was a little kid. It creeped me the hell out, man. Really? The microwave was gone the next day, you know? Wait, wait, you saw it with your own eyes? A poltergeist? No, 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 the movie. Oh, I right, saw right. the movie Poltergeist yeah. when I was a little kid. Yeah, yeah, me too, me too. Uh, it scared the piss out of me. So, so I was actually going to make a make a, a, a parallel to the to the poltergeist there. If you if you remember at the end of the first poltergeist movie, yeah, spoiler alert guys on like a 35-year-old movie or 40-year-old movie however long it's been. Uh, but uh, uh, they so finally when they they're, they're done they're like we're out of here they leave the house and they go into a hotel and so during during the the the, the movie the little girl is communicating to the spirits through the television right with the static right and we'll do the static we'll do uh there we go like the static right like the you know and she's like uh, the hands on the tv and she's like you know it's doing static and she's like they're here you remember that <laughs> and i'm like who's here honey? run to the light yeah, yeah. The, run to the light yeah the, the tv people are here right with the static on the tv and so they, they in the end of it uh they go into a, a hotel and uh the first thing the dad does is he takes the tv that's in the hotel room and just slings it out the door on the cart and then closes the door Reminds me of your microwave story right there. You're like, microwave the, turns the on The TV myself? is the same way. Oh, does it? Does it don't turn, turn the don't don't turn the TV off. Just don't. The TV has been on here for 22 years, dude. Don't do it, huh? No, you push the on button when you're setting it up, and when it stops working, you go get a new one. And they are calm now. They're absolutely calm. Very rarely. The lady in the bedroom, when you're walking to the bathroom and the mirror on the door, the closet is always there. Right. She's on. always there. Always there. But hey, so so uh, back to back to the thing then. So so what do you think about the? Uh, so you know we we've had uh, several takes tonight, and and I I, I appreciate actually that people call in and we're we're open to the idea of several things being true at once. Uh, so what do you think about the uh, the hot spots about in particular the areas and then maybe the time of year with maybe the equinoxes or the solstices and things like this? When we were kids, um, I lived in Ohio and there was a place called the uh, Hocking Hills. And there was a great big, huge cross, probably 12, 15 feet across at the bottom, probably 50 feet tall. You know, you could see it for miles and miles away on the top of the hill. And the rumor was that was on a geographical pentagram of the planet, a cross point, a heavy point or something like that. And it was a true battle between good and evil in that spot. And that was a really weird spot, you know? So I just, 
I don't know, Mike. I mean, there's just so many little things, you know, you're working in the building and you hear the thumping around upstairs when you know there's nobody here and you're like, okay, is it a raccoon? Am I going to go check it out? Well, now I've seen enough movies. The guy goes and checks out why the radio is blaring in the basement and gets it first. You know, you don't do that. You know, the temple, the, the temple was bad. I mean, there was like a screech and scream and the, the banshees from hell sound that would happen. And when that would go off, I would just leave. I, I'm not going up there to see what that is. I I don't want to know what that is. You know, you just got to be careful. You got to be really careful dealing with that stuff because we don't know what it is. You know, how mad was that person when they died? How evil is that spirit or that demon or whatever it is? You know, it's like even with the remote viewing thing that we're trying to do and stuff like that <clears throat> that's careful you know actually even put the warning in there don't try to reach out to aliens while you're doing that yeah i mean you know uh, yeah and i think i think it was, that's something we, we didn't even really talk about is uh you know the nature the nature of spirits right i think that uh it, it always depends and uh, i don't know i think you know uh, basically some people will say that it's it's you know like, like you just got to be careful and you're fine but I'm not so sure because I, I would think that uh, benevolent spirits would be very much the same as malevolent spirits. Just the malevolent ones would trick you and make you try and think they're trying to help you. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I'm a good guy. I'm not going to hurt you. I just exactly. want to hang out and watch the Yankees game with you. Well, isn't that what like a, yeah. isn't that what Bill Gates does? What a sociopath would do? <laughs> 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 I'm, just saying, I'm just throwing his name out there as an example. It, it, I don't really mean that, of course. I'm just saying, you know, like you know, like the, a bad person is not going to be like, I'm here to hurt you, right? That's not the way it works. Yeah, we're. we're yeah, we're going to give a speech and you know about how we should depopulate the planet, and then we'll tell you <laughs> okay, we're okay. going to be the ones that okay. want to <laughs> okay, okay. hand you out to make sure right. you don't. All right, let's stop. Stop. Sorry, it was a bad joke. It was a bad joke. Mm-hmm. I don't. Know. Let's yep. not go down that road. But anyway, you get you get my point. A bad person is not going to tell you I'm here to hurt you, right? And so I think if you're communicating with these things, I think you know again that's kind of really not in the purview what we're talking about tonight. But I, I think it, yet it remains as a as something, right? Something worth adding to the conversation because. Uh, because what, what, uh, yeah, T- Tam says this on uh, Facebook, we shouldn't mess with the dead anyway. And I agree. I agree. What's up, Anthony? I see you there, buddy. With the, 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 the sad face. Why are you sad? Don't be sad. No, you're in, you're in, a, you're in a good spot now. You're here. You're here. What's up? Vicky, Vicky on Facebook says, I can feel spirits in houses. And that's exactly what I'm saying. So like, uh, there, there are people out there. Uh, my mom is like this. She says that, uh, she can, she can see things. Right. And she says she doesn't like to bring it up because people just think she's batshit insane. Doesn't even like to bring it up in front of me, and she knows I do. She knows I'm basically spooky on the internet, right? And it, like she listens to the show sometimes, and she still doesn't like to bring it up in front of me, you know. So it's like it's there, right? It's it's kind of a real thing that you you uh, if you do, uh, people think you're you're batshit, you know. People think you're clinical, and I don't know, I don't know. I, I don't think that's the case, of course. But uh, you know, uh, clearly there are some people that are say they see things and they don't, and should probably get help. But I don't think that's the case if you see things. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know. I if digress. the CD works out, can we get mom to call in and give her her take on it? Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. She's called in before. I don't like her calling into the show. because uh, No? Well, because it creeps me out because I think I'm treating her differently, and I think that you guys will pick up on it and find out who my mom is. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's why. Oh, that's why. So I, she, that, that, well, it is the internet and stuff like that. We have yeah, to be exactly. I'm not, I'm not trying to have, you know, not, not like we're celebrities here or anything, but I'm not just not trying to have people find out where I live. So yeah. Uh, so yeah, I will. How about this? I'll ask her and then I'll tell you about it. I'll tell you what she says. We could do that. No, that's cool. And that. if it doesn't work out, I got out to the emails to the, girls who did the first one and i'm trying to get out an email for the guys that did the second one over there at the temple okay so to see if i can get a new burn hard copy if you don't know what jay's talking about he uh he purchased a masonic temple uh, an old old one and he's got some actual artifacts from it he's got like an old encyclopedia set but he actually had people come in and do like a ghost hunt inside this masonic temple because uh, there were, it seemed to be haunted, and so he's got like the uh, a video, like a disc of the data and some video that they did. Uh, they did EVPs and stuff, as far as I've, I've, I understand, and they 
this is like a basic- they had a box they had a four light box that they went in and they would ask it questions to what light you know red yes no you know multiple choice for colors and like stuff a, like that like a dip and the thing right? started working yeah the thing started working and i was like wow dude okay so they're talking to the one in this really creepy place where everybody in town knows that somebody was murdered brutally okay and that's not good. So, so the, but that's what the thing starts about. getting mad. The thing starts getting mad. And he goes, do you want us to leave and leave you alone? And the thing starts saying, yes, 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 yes. Are we bugging you? Yes, 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 yes. And then the thing starts just going red, 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 red. And then all the colors start freaking out. And I'm like, dude, you are obviously ticking this thing off. Maybe we should move on. And then when they do the ghost, well, I mean, because there's like eight places in the building that these little EMP thingies, I, I, I am not a ghost hunter. I could probably take you out squirrel hunting, rabbit hunting, <laughs> deer hunting. You want to go out there and find a ghost? I don't know. I don't have any, I don't have any of the materials I need other than the fact that it's creepy over here. That's all I got, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, a, co- a couple things. We got uh, Vicky says, I can sp- feel spirits in houses. Tam says, me too, shivers down my spine and everything. Vicky says, there are others in the family who can feel spirits besides me. I hear them too. And uh, Tam wants to know, Jay bought a temple. So let me finish the story, Jay. So, so uh, and let me know, correct me if I'm wrong. So just to recap. So Jay's talked about it a lot and not just on the show when he calls in from time to time. I know the reference because he told me the story originally. And I know not everybody listens to every minute of the show. So that's why I'm recapping here. So Jay bought a Masonic temple and they thought it was haunted. Okay. He had uh, not just one, two groups of ghost hunters show up and he's got a disc. He thinks is actually the actual data from this and he's sending it to me. So I'm going to check it out. He couldn't get it to play. Uh, so I'm going to see if I can fix whatever's wrong with it. And maybe we'll have data from like an actual unique ghost hunt that was in a property that he owns that used to be a very, very old Masonic temple. So who knows, right? Uh, hopefully uh, I won't joke about what the disc might be otherwise, but hopefully it's the, the disc we think it is. And it's uh, we get some actual like pretty cool like a uh, unique ghost sort of ghost hunting evidence that maybe we can uh maybe maybe even watch and put on the stream if you're okay with that and discuss some of it i can t- 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 chop that's it. why i said it to you okay sweet sweet so there you go share with everybody i'm sure the people that made it would probably be super stoked that yeah, someone's yeah. showing their data Nice. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that would be cool. That would be totally cool. So yeah, um, I'm looking forward to it. So Jay sent it today. There's a tracking there. I'll uh, keep an eye on it and go pick it up from the P.O. box. So if you guys have anything like that you want to send to me, there is a P.O. box and uh, you can uh, do it at, uh, find it in the Discord. It's pinned up right in the top in the general channel. I'm not going to, I'm not going to pimp it. I'm not trying to say send me things. I'm just saying if you have something like that to send, we have a way to do it. So we, uh, if you want to, so just FYI. Uh, so, okay. So, uh, well, maybe right. So, uh, so we're drinking the maybe juice again tonight. Is uh, is you know these things exist, and there's there's uh, people out there that say they feel these spirits. How about you? Do you do you consider yourself like a medium of sorts, uh, or do you are you kind of more like me, where you're sort of like a spiritual obtuse? Let's say. I don't know. I I, I feel it in places. You know, like when you walk into a church or something like that. There's a feeling of peace. You know, you walk into. I don't know, a bar or like a gas station in the middle of the hood, you can feel the attitude of the people around there, you know, just because they're different people at church because they want to be there, except for the kids. Yeah. You know, the people that are in the hood are, I'm going to have to say pissed that they're there because nobody wants to go to the gas station in the middle of the hood. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, for any reason. Yeah, uh, you know, in like the the worst parts of like you know inner cities, you're you're getting scoped out. You know, if if you're an, an easy mark to be robbed and stuff, it's happening. There's people. There's there's lookouts and like I've been to places. I used to deliver stuff, and uh, a driver. You know, delivering actually medications to people, and uh, like there were some places I would go to, and like you pull into the joint, and like no shit, like immediately you feel every eye in the place on you it's like 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 that i feel people like that like like i can sense people and sort of that but beyond that uh, if it's not people if it's something else i like i i have it seems like i have a, a blind spot let's say but yeah definitely people man i can i can sense that stuff like uh like i can i can tell you where the drug lookouts are because I sense their eyeballs on me. Like, I'm that guy. Like, I know what the hell's going on around me at all times. I got eyes in the back of my head, right? But for people, not for other things. So, 
yeah crazy you don't feel odd like i mean you don't you don't have feelings of peace like when you're out with a dog and Mrs. Strange on like a nature walk or something like that. Yeah, and but, but that's different. That, uh, yeah, but that's a little different. I, like I don't, I don't consider that you, like a, like a, like a spiritual thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Have but, you ever been to somebody's place or something like that? And like, wow, this place kind of creeps me out. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Garbage <laughs> laying around, dirty dishes and shit. You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, it's, it's, I don't know, like, like you know, like you, you, you try not to be judgmental of people, and you know what I'm saying, like, I don't know, like, like maybe uh, I see these things, and I, my sixth sense kicks in, and I ignore it, I, I, I don't know, I don't know, maybe, but I'm just saying, like, I, it just feels like I'm a spiritual obtuse, and I'm, I'm fine with that, I'm okay. It's okay. Like I said, you might be better off. Sometimes it's creepy. I'm telling you, when you're over there trying to clean up the floor of the thing for your first party, where you're having a band in the place for the first time in 30 years, you know, yeah. it, it, you start hearing this creepy stuff and like that going around, and you're like, okay, I'll just turn the radio up a little bit louder and not go check it out. You know? Yeah, no. Just, it, it happened to me the other day in here, where uh, right in the house, I, I, I was walking, turned a corner. And I swear I saw somebody standing off to my left and was one of those like, you snap your head and you're like, what the hell was that? You know, and then you, your brain kicks in and you start trying to, you know, goes into overdrive. You're trying to like, okay, was that a shadow? Did I see something move? What was standing there? And is it a pareidolia? Am I playing tricks on myself? You know, that happens from time to time. Spend a half an hour analyzing it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what like, was that? Ex- right, exactly. It happens from time to time. And uh, I, when we were leading those ghost hunters around the one time, my buddy and I were like kind of thinking, you know, we were very skeptical at the time. Yeah, a lot of people have been, you know, dead over here and everything else like that. We were like standing off where they were doing their thing, talking about what we're doing with the building and a section of it that's falling down, blah, 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 blah. Right. And we both see something like a white floaty thing heading down the hallway. And I'm like, did you see that? And I'm like, nope. You're going to tell them about that? And I'm like, nope. <laughs> and <Nope. laughs> whatever the hell that thing was floating down that way, we are not going that away. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. You know, just, just, don't do it. I mean, I mean, just it, it's the same way with the aliens and everything else the show's about. You know, it was just, yeah, are, are you going to be running up there with a great big sign? Hey, man, I'm your friend. Yeah. Wow, you're slim picking it. Look at that. That's great. Oh, man. Dinner served. <laughs> Dinner is. We got 100,000 of them when they get on the ship right now. We don't even uh, have to beg for them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. I, I do have to correct you on the story. Yeah. Do it. Do though. it. Do it. The, we didn't ask the ghost hunters to come to us. Okay. We had them begging us. Okay. Just to let them in the building. Okay. That's cool. And yeah, the. The first guy was the guy that was going to help us set up our Halloween party because the first party we had with the band and all that was a Halloween party. And he was going to help us try to make some money and lead ghost tours around groups of 10 at a time for three days around Halloween. And it didn't pan out because city council and laws and blah, blah, blah. But he came and did this thing anyway with the owners and wives and that. And we went around. He found some stuff and put it out on his Facebook page. This is all on my Instagram too. Masonic Temple. I don't. I haven't looked at it since the building got rid of it. Nineteen ninety six. No, no, no. It was like two thousand fifteen. Instagram. Kidding. I'm just. Kidding. I'm going to see if I can <laughs> access my Instagram still. Yeah. Right. Like. Because uh, um, I could probably screenshot it and send it to you on the thing okay. on the Discord. Right? Couldn't I? Yeah, you should maybe be able to do that. Yeah, you should. Yeah, you should be able to just send a link, and we should be able to see that the account. Uh, so Mary says I have one. Uh, so I, I I had an old Mason book found at the dump. Had all the architect blueprints of the temples of the world. I ended up selling it at a garage sale. I wish I kept it now. I have one silver badge I kept. Uh, it has the triangle in Bible book inside. So Jay, because of the temple he bought, has an entire Masonic encyclopedia set, and it's those were in the funeral home. Oh, they were in the funeral home. It wasn't in the other when thing? I bought the when I bought yeah when I bought the funeral home. They were all in the funeral home, and all the guys that were the funeral directors here at the funeral home were masons at the place. Uh, uh, it's like a pitching wedge away from my house. I th- I think the uh, 
the uh, the, the 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 world's trying to tell you something, Jay. Maybe you should be a Mason. <laughs> <laughs> I had a hundred year old guy call me up and he goes, My name is Emmerich Beers. I used to be the Grand Pooba, whatever, <laughs> of the Masonic Temple. Could I would like to get in and see what sixty six and sixty four Main Street look like today? And I'm like, dude, anytime you want. Really? And he goes, Well, I got my hundredth birthday tomorrow so i can't do it but could we do it on sunday and i said i will do it anytime you want sir <laughs> nice <laughs> nice nice he drove himself there in a station wagon and walked through every single room and told me stories about all of it and at the end of our conversation, we sat down in a room that I had set up for my office with the blueprints and plans and letters you have to write, blah, blah, blah. Right. And he goes, I will sponsor you to be a Mason. I told you. The, the universe is reaching out, bro. It's a, they're after you. They're after you. You're a mark. You're a target. <laughs> they're coming to get me. You're a target. <laughs> a couple questions in the chat. Vicky wants to know, Mike, do you live in an old home? No, it's kind of newer. Uh, it's like a '90s build, something like that. So no, uh, but but who knows, right? We're uh, way up here in the north side of Vegas, like a northwest side, and so who knows, right? This was uh, back in the day. This was uh, this was a whole like uh, uh, native land, right? So who knows? Like who knows what's going on? So uh, so I'm not saying it is or isn't. I'm just saying that uh, I I don't notice these things. Uh, Tam says, "Have you ever heard of the Black Hat Man? It's so scary." Yes, uh, yes. Uh, the Shadow People will actually uh, be. Uh, We'll probably at some point revisit the shadow people and have a discussion about that and talk about the hat man. Uh, have heard of that. And Vicky wants to know, Jay, what state do you live in? I know, but uh, you can you can answer that one because you're you. Hey, you? New York. New York. Yeah. Upstate New York. Jay from Jay from Hampton. New York. Jay from New York. Yeah. So uh, upstate New York. So uh, yeah, I mean, and that's and that's actually that's like the old part of the country, right? For for like a lot of that that. Uh, uh, traumatic stuff, meaning that, uh, you know, the, the, the war and, you know, the revolutionary war and uh, the civil war and uh, the things that were like uh, going on in that neck of the woods. Like there's some, there's some, there's some heinous shit up, up over there. So, so we've got slave tunnels. I redid a porch on a house and stuff like that. Exactly. The guy wanted me to rent a lift for him and stuff like that. I'm like, no, I don't think so. And I'm like, well, he's like, why is that? And I says, well, because you got cisterns underneath your house and stuff like that. And it kind of looks like you have a tunnel. So we pulled the rock up underneath in the basement, up under the thing. There's a tunnel that goes all the way down to the river, probably like 200 yards. Holy smokes. It was smokes. a slave. Yeah, it was a, what you call it, um, Underground Railroad. Yeah, the actual Underground yeah. Railroad. That's amazing, man. They almost, lost, when they were redoing the road, the backhoe almost lost it because it collapsed part of the tunnel yeah. two blocks away from his house. Holy smokes! Did they? Did you ever follow up on the? Uh, see if there was like a famous connection there, or I, I'm sure the, like, so that was clandestine and not really. You know, it'd be. Um, no, actually, Isaac Perry. I don't know how well anybody is into architecture or anything else like that, but Isaac Perry was a really great architect back in the, uh, 1870, maybe 1890. Building. He was one of the guys that got like the big buildings up over eight, nine stories with concrete filled cast iron and stuff like that but he built an inebriate asylum up here that looks like a castle we talked about that too one day that i was going the next day to take a tour of um but the architect of the houses of these places and stuff like that they were the most prominent people in town that were doing that back then no um should i not be saying the town no, you're okay. You're okay. You're fine. Bing, Binghamton in upstate New York was like the highest per capita of millionaires for probably like 50 years. Okay. All right. Um, IBM was invented here. Um, all the shoes for the military from like everything since like 1840 or something like that up until Vietnam were made in Binghamton. I've actually yeah. got some. So I, I pulled up all kinds. I got ghost stories from uh, Vietnam. I got ghost stories from uh, Civil War. I got ghost stories from all over the damn place. Uh, interesting you bring up Vietnam. But but uh, so let me ask you those because we did. We've talked about Gettysburg in the past. Have you ever been to Gettysburg yourself? 
Yeah, we took all the Boy Scouts there. Okay. Uh, did you? That's a very solemn place. That's a. There's a very solemn. We were actually there um, at church. At the, they have a really nice church there, um, built, and we went there for mass with all the Boy Scouts on um, Memorial Day. We took all the Boy Scouts up there. Yeah, that's a different kind of place, man. Didn't really see anything. It was more of a feel kind of place. But yeah. we were also there during the day and camping, you know, 25, 30 miles away because it's Memorial Day. You can't get a campsite in there unless you do it 10 years in advance. Yeah, 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 totally. But, totally. Uh, Christopher says, our home was built in 1930, and a realtor told us a lady died here many years ago. So I was kind of eager to maybe see her ghost, but we've been here for four years now and haven't seen anything, sadly. So I guess her spirit went elsewhere. Uh, good show tonight, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thanks for sticking through. I know I got like I know, guys, it's a long show. I think at some point, uh, let's see, unless there's like an outrage, like a like an actual outrage in the chat. What if we scale the show back to two hours? Would you guys freak out? Let's see the outrage in the chat. Because <laughs> sometimes sometimes we get to the end here and it's like, well, maybe that should have been 30 minutes shorter. You know what I'm saying? It kind of it, it kind of devolves into just, uh, you know. <laughs> whatever the fuck we're doing, you know, whatever's on our mind tonight, you know, which, which is okay. Like for me, that's fine for, you know, for you, for Jay, I'm having a good time with you. It's no sweat. I don't mean it like that. I mean it that it most times that's what it devolves into just kind of whatever we're, you know, whatever's on our mind. And it, it kind of derails from the original. I don't know. Like I said, what do you guys feel like? Do you feel like this show should be two and a half hours or two hours, and then it's you know kind of tighter and more uh, to the point. Or do you like when we derail in the third hour and act like idiots? <laughs> that's the question. <laughs> that's whatever. The, that's the question. Well, what do you prefer? What do you prefer? I just I just don't like uh, like uh, feel like I'm wasting people's time. And sometimes I uh, see Sherry says I need to go. I'm exhausted. See, I, I've worn Sherry out. See what I mean? She's like, oh God, I can't do it. Stand another minute of this. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Thanks for hanging out with us, Sherry. Have a great night. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a good one. Play by ear. Like if it uh, if it ends up like uh, I'm laboring, skip it. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, like I said, I, but I know I know some of you plan it. You know, plan on it. So I I don't want to be like, oh fuck it, we got nothing to say. I'm out of here. You know, I, like I don't want to do that either. Because you know, some of you might re- literally actually plan. You know, your evening around. Oh, Trouble Minds is on tonight, so I'm gonna. You know, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hang out, and I'm gonna. You know that work in the garage if Beachwood's out there and listen to Troubled Minds. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I kind of don't want to like just cut early either. I just don't want to cut early, cut early either. All right. So we got, there you go. Let's see the outrage in the chat. Three hours or two hours. What, what do you like on the shows? I, I do like that uh, kind of being off the radio and just being able to say whatever the fuck comes to your mind, you know, not having to do the transitions and do the kind of carnival barker. You're listening to Troubled Minds and this is Michael Strange. Ha ha ha. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I kind of like not having to do that stuff. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I, it's cool, but it's also cool not doing it. I don't know. Uh, there you go. The, the chat, the chat's moving. There you go. You're like, I'm, I'm taking away the third hour, guys, and the chat starts booming. <laughs> I'm looking to hear from you guys. We're kicking it with Jay tonight and uh, just uh, talking about ghosts and uh, what is this whole ghost business? And, uh, you know, like, uh, is there an actual... Uh, an actual, um, well, I don't know. Like, what, what do you believe about it? That's, again, that's really what the, so I, so I kind of frame it to start a conversation, as you know. And so I'm not really trying to, again, tell you anything. You know, most of you guys know this stuff I'm already talking about. So it's really kind of just bringing up those topics and then trying to uh, kind of uh, prompt you into calling and telling me about what you know about it. You know, that's, if I'm doing it right, that's what happens. But uh, it doesn't always happen that way. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Large Marge says, Michael, I get lonely when I don't have conspiracy radio at work. That's what I'm saying, right? So like, there's people that literally are like, yeah, sweet, you know? I get three hours of troubled minds tonight while they're at work, you know? Or, or oh, you know, before I go to work or after I come home. or That's what I'm saying. I don't know. I feel kind of bad taking away an hour. But I, I hate struggling. I just hate, like, you know, talking to myself for three hours. And if nobody calls, you know, like, and to you guys credit, like most times we got somebody in here, we got Jay in here tonight. Most times Kelly calls in the third hour, you know, I'm just saying like, if I, if we're literally going for like the third hour and I'm just talking by myself, I'm exhausted. Right. Cause it's, you know, it's kind of like juggle Mike juggle. You know what I mean? And I don't mean like that, like you guys, I just mean like the pressure on myself. You, you start to get, uh, 
Uh, tired. Yeah, these kids are tired. That's all. Uh, and, and yeah, like I should be doing something else. Uh, let's see. Uh, there we go. Uh, there, there it is. Pr- Promethean Reckoning. I see you, buddy, on D-Life. says, three is good. When Coast to Coast went to two-hour blocks, I stopped listening. <laughs> that and Nori sucks at interviewing. <laughs> oh, George Nori. Oh, there you go. See, I told you, man. You start to you, you threaten to take away the third hour while we derail, and the, the chat lights up. <laughs> the chat lights up. Uh, what do you, what, what's your take, Jay? Do you like the third hour? I love the third hour because people let their minds wander. You know? Yeah, yeah. I think that's part of it too. Is is you, you can kind of you know like when we're when we're you know doing the breaks and the radio and all that stuff. I kind of have to not let let people wander too much you know if they're not if they're off topic i gotta kind of like uh, either cut them off or kind of put them back on topic but here like who cares you know like we like a lot of times that uh, like uh like uh 40s am says uh, to be honest i love the derail and because it is you know so, some of our best conversations come in the last 20 minutes of the third hour because we're not even talking about anything that we were talking about in the first two uh yeah yeah, yeah. It's uh, Marge says, look, large Marge says, if it gets slow, open the lines to a conspiracy free for all. Do you not listen? It's always open to a conspiracy free for all. Mm. Literally, every show is open for that. It's okay. So only if you call in in the first two hours and you want to talk about something else, I'll entertain it for you get a few minutes because we can't derail too hard. But the third hour, shit, go ahead. <laughs> Whatever you got, let's talk about it. What do you got, Jay? What kind of conspiracy free for all you got tonight? Yeah, we got your take on the ghosts. Let's go. Uh, let's go for. Uh, yeah, yeah, I agree. So Matt says this: third hour is easier for people who curse, and that's so. So all right, now uh, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it openly, but I'm going to imply it. So if the only thing I don't like about Fringe is exactly that. I can, we can, we can, we can drop f bombs and it's fine. But the whole point is uh, of being on the digital radio is to get syndicated, right? And then so if we're all just saying you know fucking this and fucking that the whole time, it'll never happen. So I don't know, but I also kind of don't like that it runs off a lot of people that would call in the first couple hours. You know, I don't like that either. I don't know. Just uh, some open thoughts to the uh, to the to the forum out there. I mean, you gotta get the beeper, man. Yeah, it's 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 three thousand bucks. Bro. It's three thousand bucks. <laughs> I saw, I saw, I, I saw. You posted it. I was like, man, that's a lot of money. It's three grand for the <clears throat> thing. For the is it was it three grand or six grand? I don't even know. Like once it starts. Well, the the first one was three grand, and then you were saying you didn't know whether or not that one would work. Oh right, exactly. Yeah. So we're talking about a gizmo to like censor curse words in real time, right? I don't know. Anyway, like like I said, I, I I'm not sure it's worth all that. See, see, there you go. Penny says I miss the old days when we could third hour derail the entire damn show. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. And there's you know, but I, you can't please everybody. Is part of the problem, right? Some people are like, no, yeah, I like when you stay on topic. Other people are like, no, I like when you ramble. Like that one guy that left the review. He's like, oh, I don't know. The guy talks fast and he rambles on a lot. I'm like, well, no shit. It's a talk show. Like, what, do you, what the hell do you expect me to do? Fuck's sakes. I'll just, we'll have like, you know, 20 minute music breaks. Is that better for you, sir? <laughs> I just don't understand. I just don't understand. I do talk fast. That's legitimate. And I do ramble. That's legitimate. But if you come to. You have a lot to say. Show, but if you listen to a talk show, what the fuck do you expect? Right? Like, come on. Anyway, let's. Uh, let's uh, We've only got three hours to get all this info out. Exactly. That's, that's my point. So you got to ramble the shit out of it. You just got to ramble the shit out of it. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, there we go. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Prometheus Reckoning says, damn, a beeper is 3K. It would be cheaper just to, uh, what does that say? Yekin, Yekinderberg, fuck anytime someone. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what you mean with that word, but it would be cheaper to off the person who cursed. <laughs> it's probably <laughs> what way you're getting that, right? And then we wouldn't have any cursing. And I'm just kidding. That was a bad joke. But all right. So anyway, well, we're, we're at the end, Jay. Jay, thanks for hanging out. And guess what? We get to do the outro with Jay. Anyway, I appreciate you hanging out with me tonight. Like I said, it gets laborsome for me. I, I'm, I'm serious, guys. If nobody calls in for the third hour, by like two hours and 30 minutes in, I'm just exhausted. And I, 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 I'm just like, fuck. You know, like somebody give me a break here. And so if nobody calls, you see what I'm saying? So it is very reciprocal here. 
So that's what I'm saying. So thank you, Jay, for hopping on tonight and making the conversation go. Thanks for uh, derailing us a little bit because we need it and I need it. And, uh, you know, keep the mind thinking about uh, all kinds of different things. But uh, let's let's finish up. Let's finish up. Yeah, but you want a quote, Mike? No. Nah, yeah. Yeah. Well, how about a final thought? And then we'll uh, then we'll do a quote after that. What, what, so what are your final thoughts on the uh, the spiritual thing, the the solstice, the timing, and the places of uh, the the spiritual veil being its thinnest? We're probably looking at it, you know. I mean, Native American Indians and even a lot of the Hindu tribes, and you know, even a lot of the religions have special holidays around all of those things. Somebody took the time to build New York City, so it had its Stonehenge event there. You know, cities are built that way. I mean, there's a lot of things that are right down that alley. I mean, maybe it's something we know that we don't know. Like you were saying that maybe I do see it and stuff like that, but I just kind of put it out of the back of my mind like I'm not really noticing it because I'm not really sure what it is. And that could be a lot of people, you know. They just don't, they see it, but they don't see, they don't really see it, you know. What was that? I don't know. Move right along. Not spend a half an hour. What the hell was that? You know? Let the ghost hunters into your building or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Go ahead. Check it out. <laughs> you want? Can we come over to your house? No way, man. You are not doing it. You know, two or three days after you guys come over here, man, stuff is going on crazy, man. Uh-uh, there's no way you're coming into my house. It's calm and nice and peaceful there. If they're there and they're living, they got their spot. We got our spot. They don't change the channel when I'm watching the Yankees game. Fuck yeah. Wait, wait, meaning that, uh, wait, I, I change the channel when the Yankees come on because I hate the Yankees. But anyway, I'm just. I'm from New York. You have to watch the Yankees. You don't have nothing to talk about while you're at work. Cause... Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. You got to be like, oh, wow, a bull, bullpen really blew it again last night. <laughs> Got it. Yep. Got it. <laughs> That's pretty much the Yankees conversation these days. Uh, okay. All right. All right. So let's see what I mean. We derail like crazy, but it's fine. I kind of agree. Right. So I really appreciate. Uh, so there's a style, right? So it's a style. It's a stylistic thing when you're kind of just talking free form and then you start. I do it a lot, but like when you literally just take away all the uh, fuck the themes, we're just going to talk it. Uh, your mind goes places they may not otherwise, you know? So, like, it's good. But I do ramble a lot, for sure. There's no doubt about that. But for fuck's sake, it's a, it's, it's a talk show. I don't, if you don't want me talking, I don't know what you want me doing. You know, I like, uh, you want me to dance? Dance, Michael Strange. That's what I'm saying. It's like, come on. NS says, let's fucking go. Fuck that guy, Mike. But you misunderstand. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that, like, uh, whatever. <laughs> I'm, t- I'm just saying. Uh, it, when you when you when you uh, run the thing for three full hours and then two and a half hours in, you're still struggling to kind of get more information out, and you're tired. It it becomes laborsome and le- not 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 fun for me anymore. You know, L- the 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 fun level starts to impact, and <laughs> and so as a result, I'm like, fuck it, let's just end it right now. You know, anyway. Uh, what, what quote you got, Jay? Like I said, it's okay. I agree. I kind of like just shooting the shit at the end, but some people don't. And that's why I kind of put it out there and asked. And uh, we got some good chat here. I'm going to read this. I'm going to read this to get it on the stream for posterity. Tam says, third hour is the fuck it hour. It's the best. There you go. <laughs> uh, there you go. Let's see. Uh, there you go. Uh, Vicky says, uh, let's see. Uh, Tam says, three hours, please. Why you want to ruin my life? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's what I mean. I'm not trying to ruin anybody's life. I, I appreciate the enthusiasm. Christopher says, I look forward to hear y'all in the background. It's like we're hanging out with y'all and aren't alone. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you. Uh, that's, that's nice. That's what I mean, right? It's like, uh, even though I'm struggling to talk about things sometimes, it's, um, and, I, and I don't mean it like, maybe you sense it. Maybe you do. I'm sure you guys do. But uh, uh, there you go. Adonis says, keep shows at three hours. Vicky says, we accept your rambling mic. <laughs> Thank you. That's very nice. <laughs> Tim says, I'll make a more conscious uh, effort to call in in the third hour. Uh, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm not trying to twist anybody's arm either. It's not like that. I, I Please trust me. I just don't want to, uh, I don't want to bore you. How about that? That's literally what happens is I, I feel like in, you know, the 2.45 hours 
to go where, you know, we've been at this two and a half at plus hours that you guys are sick of me. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, cause I, you know why, you know why? Cause I'm sick of me. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> so, so maybe it's all internal. I don't know. Like I said, just looking for feedback. It's okay. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. See, there you go. Now this is exactly it. Mary says this, I'd be exhausted reading through all those articles and then having YouTube to discuss, uh, I'd be dead by the end of the night. And that's what happens. So so I'm not like physically tired, but it kind of drains you a little bit mentally. And then so as we go on, I start to feel like I'm less on my game. And so as a result, I'm wasting your time. You see what I'm saying? So like, I'm cool just rambling, but you, you feel what I'm saying. So that's why I'm kind of throwing it out there. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Matt says, stay on topic during fringe third hours for Kelly. <laughs> There you go. There you go. But but Mary Mary's got it. That's exactly it. it it's a little bit exhausting. And uh, there you go. Uh, see, Penny, look at this. Look at all the, look at all the love coming out. Uh, Penny says, I, I could listen to you for six hours, Mike. That's very nice. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. It's, it's not about me worrying. I just, you know, if I'm laboring and I feel like I'm sick of myself, I feel like it translates and you guys are like, <laughs> I'm out of here. And it shows the numbers drop. <laughs> the numbers for people like fuck it i'm out of here but anyway it's okay like i said you can't please everybody all right let's do the outro jay you got a quote buddy you got a quote i well I, i've got a couple i mean I, okay do the, the first back okay. and, we're back and forth between two though do them both do the first one then we'll do the music and you do the second one you choose the order Arr. okay i am the enemy because i like to think that i can read I'm into the freedom of speech and the freedom of choice. I'm the kind of like guy who likes to sit in a greasy spoon and wonder, gee, should I have a T-bone steak or a jumbo rack of ribs with a side order of gravy fries? I want high cholesterol. I want to eat bacon and butter and buskets of cheese, okay? I want to smoke a Cuban-sized cigar in Cincinnati in the non-smoking section. I want to run through the streets naked with green jello all over my body reading playboy magazine why because i suddenly might feel the need to do it okay okay and it's i know dennis that. leary dennis it's, leary it's, i was about to say i saw that because you shared it the dennis leary said that yeah and he's fucking right the guy's fucking right look the point is it doesn't matter if it's cra- if it seems crazy freedom means you have the ability to do it that's what it means and we'll get we'll get back to some of that stuff too. We'll we'll get back to some of that uh, freedom talk. I know it makes us revolutionaries, but holy shit, somebody needs to say it. Uh, 40s AM says third hour plus free talk plus whiskey equals ratings. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to that, sir. Cheers to that, sir. Uh, yes, sir. There you go. NS says I'm down to hear you rant about <laughs> random bullshit in the third hour, Mike. There it is. There it is. All right. All right. Uh, that's fine. Okay. So how about this? How about we accept that we'll do a third hour, but I, I implore you to not be disappointed if I suck in the third hour. How about that? <laughs> I think as long as we come to an understanding, guys, I think we're okay. All right. So that's a, that was a good quote, and that is spot on. Well, we need to talk about more freedom soon. We have not got to mix in a freedom show now and then. All right. So let's, do, uh, let's uh, play some outro music and give us, uh, give us the final quote for the night, sir. This is the one I pulled out because of what the topic of the show was. To the earth and those who lie beneath, to the past we are about to walk, and to those who tread them before us, the homes we will enter and to whom they once housed, to the city and its echoes, no, we come in blessing and we wish you only peace. That's the thing that the little girl said before the ghost hunter trip in the temple. She was just, it's a little prayer that they say to make sure you don't pick up any bad juju when you go away. So I just remember when you're playing with things like that, you be careful. Can you do me a favor and post that in the, in the, in the discord? I appreciate that. There's a little prayer from Jay about when we're going away, bad things don't get us. Uh, and because we're finishing right now, uh, I think it's a, it's a nice way to end this. And uh, thank you. Thank you for listening. Thanks for hanging out. Like I said, I do talk fast. I do ramble. I kind of don't care. <laughs> I kind of don't care. <laughs> like I said, I don't want to bore you. I don't want to waste your time is all. That's, that's all it is. 
So uh, as we finish, like I said, thank you so much for all the appreciation. Thanks for all the uh, thoughtful chat. Thanks for all the thoughtful calls. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight, Jay. Thanks for hanging out with us, everybody. Like I said, I know, I know you could be doing a million things right now, and instead you're right here with us. And it means a lot. I promise you it does. Thanks again. Remember, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 7 p.m. Pacific, Monday and Friday, which means tomorrow we're going to do 3 p.m. We'll do Trouble Minds News with Michael Strange. And uh, otherwise, what's up? You guys know the drill. Be sure, be strong, be true. Anything to add, Jay, for my actual outro outro? (laughs) Fantastic show after fantastic show, Mike. Don't give up, man. Thanks, really. You're no, doing no, it's a great like job. That. It's not like that. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Appreciate that. Like I said, all the love. Look at that. I threatened to pull away the third hour, and the love starts pouring. I'm not trying to do that. I just want honest feedback is all. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you for listening. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thanks for the Patreon, the patrons. Patreon. Thanks for the support on Twitch. Thanks for listening. Thanks for spreading the word. Thanks for all the thoughtful chat and the phone calls. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and I promise I'm not running for office. But thank you anyway. From our troubled minds to yours, have a great night. 